uh, Thursday, but we have to get it in when we can get it in. Get it in. Hit that like button as we get started. Let's get it. MG is coming. MG is coming. MG is coming. It's coming. FD MG is coming. It's coming, FDMG, it's coming, 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 it's coming. MG is coming, thought it's personality be twerking, it's twerking. Mm. <laughs> so many memories. <laughs> remember, remember PayPal the puppy? He called him, hey, you. <laughs> well, Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning on in M1 side of the Cookie Crush Chat. I had to clean my glasses today. <laughs> Sorry for being late as usual. I had to get the, the younger kids, the uh, children settled upstairs. Uh, I wasn't even planning on live streaming uh, today. I, I'm, I'm trying to live stream Monday and Tuesday. Most of you guys are aware we did live stream on Monday, but then Tuesday I didn't get the live stream, didn't get the live stream yesterday, went into work today. Uh, I've been really, really tired with the overtime and everything. But uh, today, I figured I'd get on here for about a month. No, we get on here. It's not. We shouldn't be here too long. I figured an hour, hour and a half, uh, because there's some new breaking information that I would like to share with you. Now, people send me stuff. I want to thank everyone that sends me stuff. I appreciate it because I don't really follow Uma like I used to. I just got done more recently with an eight month break. Uh, so I want to thank everyone who sends that, that who send me links. There's a lot of stuff that I want to get to at some point. But today we're going to focus on a video where allegedly I haven't watched the video yet. Uh, yet. That's why I'm saying allegedly Umar has extended uh, the opening grand opening date to 2025. What's interesting is that we can look at a video from, let's say, last week. And he says that, that he's thinking about whether it's going to the grand opening is going to be uh, during Kwanzaa. Uh, he does it every year. He usually says August 21st, and he changes it to Kwanzaa. Uh, but, but then uh, he, we, I can pull up another video where he says he's thinking about doing it in February, which is Black History Month. OK. And then I've heard him say, well, we're going to probably do it in the spring when it's warmer. So, OK, the spring of 2024. But someone told me and they sent me a link to the video. I haven't watched. We're going to watch it here live, live reaction that Umar has extended it to 2025, allegedly. I wouldn't be surprised by that. I've been telling people this for a long time, that this is a long con. And the means through which Umar has been able to extend this con for 13 years, over 13 years, is through the use of the internet. So it is, in point of fact, cybercrime. I have a degree in cybersecurity. This is cyber. It's a clear example of cybercrime. And if it is true that he's extended the date to 2025, what that will mean is that this will be a 15 year project. That by 2025, 15 years would have passed. And I have the receipt to, to prove that right here, right now. Welcome everyone to Cookie Crest Chat. Of course, I've shown this many, many times. Let's show it again for people who have not seen it, or maybe you. Uh, folk who uh, may think that I'm making this up. I'm going to say something real quick. Everything that I say about Umar is backed up. I've done all the research. I have all the files for the most part, all the files I would need to pull up to show you uh, that what I say about Umar is true based upon his own words. Now, there are people, they will say all kinds of stuff about Umar that's not true. I don't like that. I don't appreciate that. Okay, There's people who said all kinds of things about me aren't true. I don't like that. I don't appreciate it. Some people believe it without any evidence. You should always say, well, where's the evidence of this conclusive evidence? See, I can pull up a video and let Umar out of his own mouth admit to what I say that he has said. He will say it. 
I don't have to spin things. I don't have to manipulate things. I don't have to lie. That it, I don't believe in that. I will pull up the receipt. So I don't have to lie about Umar in this 13 years today in 2023, this 13 year scam fraud. Based on what he's saying, 2025, allegedly he's saying this. We're going to watch the video that will make it 15 years. And here's the receipt right here. Umar Abdullah Johnson, January 6, 2010. This is over 13 years ago. About to be, uh, it's about to be 14 years ago. In a couple of months, less than a couple of months, a little uh, less than a, less than two months. He said promises in 2010 to begin laying the groundwork for the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Pan African School for Black Boys, specializing in learning disabilities and disruptive behavior disorders. This will be a private school, and yes, you will pay in order for your son to attend. The grand opening was set for September 11, 2020. Excuse me. September 11, 2013. That means as of today, this school is a decade late. As of today, it's a decade late in a couple of months. It's past due a decade plus a couple of months. My birthday is coming up too in two days. I'm trying to see if I'm going to come up on there after work and get up. I'm going to be looking so tired. I mean, I've been there. We're just working a lot. I, I want to come up here just to kick it. Maybe we kick it for 30 minutes or something. I don't know. But this was uh, September. He says September 11, 2019. We're now in November uh, of 2023. That's over a decade late. And he posted this in 2010. So if this school now he's saying allegedly that it's going to open in 2025, that will be 15 years since he made this announcement here in 2010 and then it will be uh what is this 12 years late the grand opening will be 12 years late by then took a crush chat i mean what how do y'all feel about that you umar johnson fathers how do y'all feel about that see it's a clear case of a long con and it's fraud okay it's cyber crime in essence right then I'll post a link too for uh, members. If any members, if you want to call in during this live, we're not going to have a long one because the video is relatively short. You're welcome. To, I don't even know if I put put the link in there. Let me see if I make sure if I, I don't think I did. I'll post it uh, in, uh, for the community tab for only members. Um, and so head over there uh, when you get a minute if you would like to call in at some point during the show. You don't have to, but if you want to, you're welcome to. All right. So what I want to do is I want to pull up a video. Uh, it's a more recent video. Of Umar, and I haven't watched it. I just watched like the first 15. He, he took a shot at Lord Jamar for some reason. I don't know why, but but so that's going to be something else right there. We, we'll have to wait and see. I don't know why Umar continues to do this. You know, he's burned so many bridges. He really has. He, he's burned so many bridges uh, and it's it's constant. It's always some sort of a mess. He's dealing with somebody and he's he's going off or he's, he's upset and then he holds on to grudges for like two or three, four or five, ten years. Um, let me let me let me post this right here for members. Give me one second. I want to make sure I do this. All channel members, if you're interested in, in joining, matter of fact, I uploaded a video today uh, to talk about the Chicago fiasco that Umar's talking about. The Chicago town hall he's claiming that he that got canceled by the mayor out there. I'd like to see some evidence and proof of that. See, just because someone makes a claim doesn't mean that it's true. Where's the evidence of any given claim? All right, let me just do this real quick. All right. Okay, members, here is the, the link if you guys want to, to chat with me during the live. And you can call it any any time. I want to make it to where it's only at certain points during the live, but you can whenever you want to, it's fine. I just posted just now. Okay. All right. So let me pull this up. There was a couple of super chats already. Let me get to these real quick. Each B says, set it all, Cookie Crush. Said, yeah, yeah. We had to have an emergency town hall meeting on this. Is it true? Did he say 2025? Well, we're going to see. I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised because I've heard him say 2013. I heard him say 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, debating on 2024, and then allegedly 2025 that the school was going to open. And there's people who still believe this 13 years in. They, they still believe this. This is going to happen. Uh, thanks, Eve, for, Eve, uh, Eve for Super Chat. Good to inform the AK says, it's been so long that Umar's name has changed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, these changes name many times. Jermaine Shoemaker, 
Umar Abdullah Johnson, Umar something something Johnson. I mean, he has a lot of aliases too. I actually have all that information from way back. He's had he has so many aliases. That's that's a red flag right there. When people have all these different aliases. Uh, thanks, good twin. And then Uncle Mantis <laughs> said, "Leave my descendant alone." In 120 months, FDMT opens. Is there anyone here who believes that it's going to open? Seriously, that, that it's going to open? Let's say in 2025, hit the one. I, I just just ask him. All right. Yeah. Okay, Uncle Mantis. <laughs> Y'all crazy. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat. All right. All right. Okay. So, um, oh, you're welcome. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, thank you for for um, for subscribing. I would encourage everyone to subscribe because at some point, and it's going to be soon, I'm going to set it to where only subscribers can comment on videos and comment in the, in the uh, chat room. Okay, I've already told people in advance. I won't do it uh, uh, next week, but probably the following once we get into the the month of December. All right, so let me pull up the video here now. Here we go. And uh, let me know uh, as we progress through likes, I, I like to get a like count. Let's go for um, let's go for 250 likes. And then we'll go for 350 likes. And then we'll go for 500 likes. So now I'm being greedy. That'll be our goal for this live stream. And it won't be here that, uh, that long either. OK, so there's our goal right there. Let me start this so that I can pull this up later. Uh, Uncle uh, Nancy, <laughs> Uncle Nancy, says, I missed the last show, so I need at least a three hours tonight. <laughs> no, no, I can't. I can't. I, I, I can't do three hours. That's why I try to start a little early so I can get a little more in. Okay, So but we'll see what happens. Yeah, uh, Umar, he was just doing the one, two, three, and he's uh, the one, two, three thing rant. And then he says something like uh, Uncle Nancy or Uncle Nancy or something. I said, man, this guy, he's, he's hilarious. All right, yeah, we, we're not going to do three hours, though, Uncle Nancy. I apologize. All right, thank you for the super chat. All right. Okay, uh, here we go. Let me pull up the video so we won't uh, waste any more uh, any more time. Okay, I want to be quick. Right? Right? I'm talking about once Dr. Umar get to school, I'm going to come do the electric for free. I'm going to go do the plumbing for free. I'm gonna come... They ain't doing a damn thing for free. Ain't nobody showed up yet with no free service at FBMG. Stop that. Okay, listen. Part of the issue is, see, Umar is only dealing with people who are local Pookie and Ray Rays for the most part in that area. In fact, when he recently, when he had a phone call, he, we were watching the video and, and the guy was talking about, he was talking about pulling a permit. And Umar was like, uh, in other words, he was thinking about it. But since he was on live, he says, yeah, go ahead and pull it just in case, because, you know, the haters, that kind of thing. But if 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 he wasn't live streaming when he got that phone call, he said, oh, don't worry about no permit, because he has just regular old people coming up there. I have a video I can pull up where they were up on the roof and there literally there's two guys up there. One of them has on some sandals, some some house shoes. The other guys had on some and ones. These are the guys supposed to be doing the roof. I can pull up the video right now. OK, I don't lie. I can pull up the video right now. Now, people lying on me. Yes. But that doesn't make two wrongs. Don't make a right. I ain't going to do Umar lied on me. Yes. But I'm not going to do that. So he deals with people who are local and he, and he deals with Pookie and Ray Rays. He doesn't deal with true professionals. He did. The only time I can remember, let me let me take that back. The only time I can remember him ever dealing with professionals was when he got some of the electricity turned on. And what he did was he had some people come out who were professional electricians. And yes, he did pay these people uh, and they did uh, work up to a certain point, And then he uh, ended the contract. He basically fired them. But see, by that time, he had enough electricity in some of the building at least on one side of the street to where he can pass it off as if all this work had been done and electricity is all done. That's why you hear him say things like, yeah, you know, we only got two more inspections. You only got two more inspections. Well, what about the electricity? Because he's not mentioning electricity. No, that all that has to be inspected because there's wiring coming all out the walls. There's exposed wires all over the place. So see, Umar isn't dealing with professionals, but he, why should he? he only does that? He only does gets any work done so that he can act like it's, I call it the illusion of progress. He gives you the illusion that he's making progress. And now here we are 13 years later. In terms of him acquiring these, these abandoned buildings up in Wilmington, we're already, what, four years, almost five years into this. He'll throw a little something out to you. Umar Johnson follows every once in a while. But he's, he has Pookie and Ray Ray types coming up there to do work. Now, I'm going to tell you all something. He's lying here, too, because there are people who did. And I, I covered this uh, years ago. There are people who offered free services where it would have been a tax write off for the company. And one individual was going to come and do the HVAC work. He was going to pull, bring a team down and they were going to use their vacation time. It's paid vacation time. But the company allowed for a certain amount of hours per year to go and do like charity work. And it's a tax write off. So they were going to come down and do that work. And he, he was going to put together a team to come down and do it for free. In addition to that, he was going to have people come down and do the plumbing. 
Did Umar and see Umar communicated back and forth? I have the receipts on that. Okay, he communicated back and forth like twice or maybe three times. And then when the guy asked him, well, "When do you want us to come down? Let's get this schedule set up," Umar stopped responding, and he's done that to many people. People offering to do free services. Uh, Brother Darren, rest in peace. He's the one that got me to uh, get on path to do the cybersecurity because I want to do something in uh, in law. But he's like, "No, go go for the for the IT related stuff." Rest in peace. He was he was going to help Umar out to get a website up up for free. He helped uh, me with my website, getting it back up. He also helped my wife get it because it got hacked, got my wife's website or at least partially up. But he passed before he got to finish it. Rest in peace. I miss that. that brother. But there's plenty of people who offer Umar services for free. I remember this one brother. He, he did a video many years ago and he, he said he had contact with Umar to help him to get things organized, more organized in terms of the financial uh, part. And Umar never responded. No. There's plenty of people who were who willing to offer Umar Johnson uh, uh, free services to get this project up, up off the ground. But see, Umar doesn't want to finish. That's the whole thing. He doesn't want to finish. He does not want to get to the finish line, which is to open up a school, because then 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 what? Then what does he do? If think about this and I, and I cover this and we're going to get to it. I covered this, I think, during the last live stream. If Umar has only raised, let's say, it, it, by my estimation, two point five million dollars, it's got to be closer to three million now. But if we're going to go with two point five million. He's not going to admit to that. OK, even though back in, in October of 2017, he was up there talking about how they had already gotten a million. Someone said he never said that. I can pull up the receipt. What are you talking about? I have that. I can actually pull it up and show you all where this person was saying that. You don't know going to tell me I have the receipt. I can show you. I never say something unless I can, I can back it up. But back then he was saying that he was almost, he said, yeah, I, we already got one million. Then he says, we almost got a million. Okay. Well, let's just say almost, let's say $900,000 back then. The properties cost $400,000 with the rest of the $500,000. Y'all see $500,000 worth of work going in there. And that's just from 2014 to 2017. Well, what about 2017 all the way to 2023? What about all the money he collected there? He doesn't want this to be done. He doesn't want to get the, the school finished because it's a long con. He's a cyber criminal. He wants to extend this indefinitely because this is the preeminent way through which he receives money. I'm big papa. I'm booked. Yeah, but you're saying if the people are, are flying you out to give you hotel, motel and some food to eat, but they're not selling any tickets because it's free. How are you making money? How are they making money? They may give you a little something here, some chump change. So what's the difference? Well, if I can get people to send me free money uh, for, for, for a school that doesn't exist, I could just do this and do this. For, and he's been doing it now for the last 13 years. But in terms of since he acquired these abandoned buildings, it's, it's almost five. You got five on it. So I just want to make that point that when ooh, he's lying right there, there's plenty of people who have offered him free services to get this whole school uh, project completed, but he doesn't want to complete it. He'll talk with people a little bit. But then at a certain point, if, he, if they're not sending him money, he don't want money. He don't want help. He doesn't want manual help. That's not what he wants. He wants the, he wants the cheddar. He wants the cheese. He wants the bread. It's that simple. He don't want no school. FDMG ATM Academy. Exactly. He is. He is a cyber criminal. Okay. Uh, bah Bahia uh, Ladi says, I'm about to be a SOC, uh, SOC analyst. UN oh, good. Yeah, well, you, that's good. You're going to be doing, making some good money. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. Now, I may have inspired you, but you getting it done. Okay. That's like a uh, brother. Uh, yeah, I, I miss that guy so much. I really do. Uh, brother Marion. Uh, he inspired me to go to get a degree IT related. And the one I, I pursued and I got it was the uh, IT uh, cybersecurity degree. But, uh, I had to do a lot of work. You know, it's one thing to be inspired, but you always got to put in the work. So congratulations on that. Keep us updated, too, because there's there's another brother. Uh, there's a brother on here who's he's uh, studying right now for a uh, I, I can't remember what what the certification it is. I don't even think he mentioned it, um, but he said that he was going to take. I thought he said he was going to take the test this month. And I told him to update us, too. So that's that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We keep going. And a whole Southern Cooks, and thanks for Super Chat, says, do we call in now? I have an Umar story, too. Shake my head. Yeah, you can call in now. It's fine. Okay, that's, that's perfectly fine. I already uh, I put the thing on. I was going to wait, you know, like 30 minutes or so, but last time I did that, uh, only one person called in, and then by the time I got there, they, they went off. I want to make sure you members, you have that uh, that ability to call in. Okay, we got, I already got 200 likes. Okay, cool. Let me, let me go ahead and light up one of these. 
we're going to pull this up right now. And thanks for the super chats, everybody. I appreciate it. Here we go. Oh, that's the wrong one. Here we go. Uh, thank you all over the YouTube. Yes, also, Lord, and Lord, Jamar, Lord Jamar ain't going to do shit. <laughs> He's still mad about that Lord Jamar interview. We're going to have to do a cover it. If I didn't work on my birthday, we would do a live stream for like 12 hours <laughs> and we'd just do all the Umar's rants. <laughs> I could have taken it, taken it off. My wife was like, you should have took it, taken it. You should take it. I said, nah, I'm going to save those, those option days just in case because you never know. Listen, man, the FMG is coming. Okay. All right, David. <laughs> all right. All right. It's coming. Then listen, I'm telling you right now, FDMG is coming. Okay, we're gonna wait to 2025, just like we were, we were waiting, just like we were waiting in 2019 and 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023, 20, now 2024 coming up here. We'll have to wait and see, David. Whom <laughs> I was like, ain't nobody. <laughs> he was so mad. Okay, thanks, David King, for the super chat. Also, whole Southern Cooks and, and but Bahia Lottie. And Uncle Nancy, Uncle Mantis, <laughs> y'all crazy. The good twin form, the AK. I wish I could interview him. I really wish I could. And East B, all right? Okay, here we go. He, uh, he st Umar's still mad about the, the whole Lord Jamar thing. Something in Baltimore, they're selling the abandoned properties for real cheap. I think it's $500 a building, but you got to prove you got the money to fix it up or something like that. Please look into it because y'all gonna be the next big city to get gentrified. He's black. What? What are you talking about? Man, let's come together, start an LLC with everybody's name on it, put a couple G's together, buy some of these properties before the white folks push y'all out because it's flipping in J. All right. What is he talking about? We come to the Frederick Douglass Marcus. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know, I know. I, I, I was just going along with it. You know how I am. <laughs> Any joke that comes up, I go along with it every single time. <laughs> I can't help myself. I go right along. <laughs> That's how I am. Uh, Brian, what's up, man? Says Umar rant compilation. I know, because because cause I already got the list. We got the keys. You know, we got the keys, family. I'm pulling it. I'm pulling. I ain't gonna show it, but I read to y'all what I got on the list already. I, I should. I should just take off on that. Say it's my birthday, but I ain't gonna. Uh, but we we can get on here. It, it would be a 12 hour live. Like literally, we I would order food. <laughs> we just be poor kids be upstairs all day. Uh watch, let me pull this up. Let me show y'all what I got for the rants already, real quick. Hold on. Here we go, right here. Okay, so I have top 10. I only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven on here so far. If y'all can think of any, let me know. We probably wouldn't do a top 10. We'd probably do a top five if we did something like that, because that would take us 12 hours. Okay. At least. So I got the SETI rant, the Zora rant where he went off on Zora and uh, Tasha K. That was really bad. I mean, the SETI rant was really bad, too. But that that Zora, he was he was so the, the Tariq Nasheed rant, the voice Watkins. We could probably combine those two because he was going in on both of them. So let me put both of those together. The Lord Jamar rant. Uh, when he was goony gooning, talking about how the pull up team and uh, threatening people, he threatened me with physical violence too, and told his his pull up team or his go so called goony goons. He ain't got no street in him either. I, he ain't got none. He ain't got. He had zero street in him. I can tell. But the goony goon rant, we would read, we would do that, one. and then the Kobe Bryant rant. Those are the uh, one. That's one, two, three, four, five, six right there. But we would have to break that down and do do five. Yeah, I know it really was. He he really, yeah. He he <laughs> flipping Marcus Douglas. <laughs> flipping MJ, flipping Marcus, <laughs> flipping Marcus Douglas. Yeah, Jack. <laughs> Stop calling him. He did, he did. He did it quietly and peacefully, too. He cooked it. He looked cooked. G Stranger Man. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny. <laughs> that's hilarious. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, uh, yours are two days. Happy birthday to you too. And we probably got the same birthday. We got. We probably got the same birthday. What's up, uh, food, uh, food chill, and flipping up PNG. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's taking his security plus exam on Monday. All right. Then I'm going for. Okay. See, this is good, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but update us uh, uh, next time we live stream. Let us know. Yeah, I'm, I'm proud of you, man. 
you inspired me to to get my I, I, i've been i have the degree i just been he, I, not hesitant i just been busy with other stuff and be putting it off to get I, i'm uh, working on um a plus i got the book over here but in fact i downloaded it because my wife she told me why don't you just um why don't you just download the audio book and they actually have they probably have all of them on there but on amazon um what is it called I just put the app on here. We had it before, but I never used it. My phone is is let's see. I, I'm so I'm so uh thrifty. I don't want to get a new one. That's how I am. Uh on Audible, they have it. MR is like, why don't you just get it on Audible? So you're gonna have to I say I want to read it though, too. I had the book over there, uh the A plus. Um, but I said, I want to spend the money on Audible. She said, Yeah, but you can do a free uh, trial and then just pay for the book. Oh, so I said, Yeah, okay, but then after a month, I have to pay $5.95. <laughs> I'm so cheap. She's like, So what? Just do it. So I, I have the app on here now. It's loading. Um, and I got the book. The book is actually free. So I, I didn't have to pay for that. And so basically, I didn't have to pay for anything for the first month. And then after the first month, then I have to pay $5.99 a month. But it's worth it. Uh, so I, I, I'm, I'm going to get on that. So you've inspired me to do that, too. But like I said earlier, it's one thing to be inspired. It's another thing to actually get the work done. So con and congratulations, that man. Make advance, uh, Dion. Make sure you let us know. Anyone else, if you're getting into IT or you, you're working towards it, let, let us know in the chat room. Or if you look, if you're anything dealing with, you know, uh, uh, improving yourself or getting, uh, you know, higher certifications or degrees, or whatever, let us know, because we always support that here. You working on your pen test? OK. All right. So I didn't know we had all these IT people up in here. Man, this is awesome. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Update us when, when you take that test. Let us know. All right. All right. Yeah. OK, let's get to it. OK, we've been I've been running my mouth too, too much. But I got those those uh, six rants so far. If you guys can think of anyone, any other ones to consider, um, go ahead and type it inside the chat. Maybe hashtag it that way I can see it a little easier. OK, so I think I, I got all the super chats already. Did I get to everybody? Uh, Brian says, Umar. yeah, I know it would be, but it would it would literally take us about 12 hours. It would it, it would take us about 12 hours because we would stop and just it would be an all day affair. We probably would have to start at like. 10 a.m. and go to 10 p.m., something like that. It, it would be epic, though. All right. OK, so let, let's go ahead and get into this now. Here we go. Oh, this. Yeah, this is it. OK, we come to the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey camp. Now, it only took me 90 minutes to get here from Wilmington. Not a long drive at all. If there's anybody in Baltimore who has their own minivan company or bus company, school bus preferably, because I think the coach buses might be too expensive, I want to have a conversation with you. Before y'all leave here tonight, you're going to have my phone number. I'm looking for somebody in Baltimore City who has their own minivan company, school bus company, or coach, van, coach bus company, although I think the coaches might be a little too expensive because I want to Bring a bus to Baltimore every day to pick up the black boys who will come to school to FDMG every day and bring them back home in the afternoon. We already covered this. He said it's only 90 minutes. Yeah, but with traffic, rush hour, especially when it's after school, getting the kids, these poor kids going to be on the bus for three hours, getting home, getting there. That's six hours a day. I'm exaggerating a little bit. Uh, I would think it'd be about four hours a day on the bus. No, some somewhere in Baltimore. That's what he said. But he said this before. He said this before. It, it is. It's insanity because he's talking as if he really plans on doing it. He don't plan on doing nothing. I've been telling I test nothing. I done told y'all. He was want to keep this going. And because he's in Baltimore, he got to say that. If there's any people in Baltimore got a bus company, why can't you get on Google and just type in bus company? He can't do nothing. That's the word for today. <laughs> FMG is nothing. He always asking and begging. Just I need, I need, I need. So he's in Baltimore like he used to do when before he had a, these abandoned buildings. I'm in Baltimore. I'm looking at some buildings. I'm looking at some schools in Baltimore, family. If you can look for me and let me know, I'm because we're looking for FMG Baltimore. But now that he has these abandoned bills, I'm, you know, I need some buses. Uh, we need some buses, family. It, it, I only, it only took me an hour and a half. If it only takes you an hour and a half to drive there, sir, how long is it going to take school buses with, uh, with these kids? These poor kids go, <laughs> how long is it going to take a school bus to get back and forth and run out of them? Y'all do recognize it when the school buses pick up the kids, that's traffic. 
Trust me, I know. And if you're going to be going an hour and 30 minute drive, if you leave at three, you're going to run into some traffic. How long y'all think these kids going to be on this bus? Just a bunch of nothing. <laughs> he going to have a bus to Slovakia, family. We working. We all going to have. It is. It's delusional. We're going international, family. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> By the time this school opens, it's going to be FMG ruins. <laughs> yeah, archaeologists are going to be going through the ruins. All right. <laughs> What's up, Dominique? This is the homie right here. I mean, how long are these kids going to be on this bus? <laughs> I just want to know these poor kids. I know and the gas is going to be, I mean, come on, people. You, you know, doggone well that the gas is going to be, come on. Because don't they use diesel? Oh, my goodness. These, uh, so ridiculous. <laughs> well, he passed it off. He's talking like it's real. That's crazy. We got 700 people in the building already. We don't have to like button. I appreciate it. Yeah, the bus going to leave at 5 a.m. <laughs> it's going to leave at 5 a.m. That means you need to be there by 445, just in case. Not to mention when it starts snowing and stuff. Huh? Then how these poor these boy, these kids gonna be on this bus for six, seven hours, one way. <laughs> you gotta get up at listen, I know it's 2 a.m., but you gotta get up. We gotta get you to that bus because it's snowing outside. Poor kids. <laughs> they gonna get home at 10 o'clock, 10 p.m. Time to go to bed. <laughs> 2 a.m. Time to get up. A bunch of foolishness. All right. <laughs> no, NASA, like, I don't know. We, I don't know logistically how we're going to make that happen. I, yeah, I know it's IMAX 4K in, in HD with encryption. <laughs> All right, let, let's see. <laughs> let me get out of this uh, chat. Here we go. Now, of course, you got to make a decision. Are you comfortable with your son driving 90 minutes to school in the morning? And driving 90 minutes home after school. Listen, it's not 90 minutes with traffic, Umar. Even that's even that's ridiculous. Because that means that they're gonna be on they're gonna be on this bus for at least three hours a day. Come on, people. These poor kids. And he's talking like this is real. Look at him. And these people sitting back like, yeah. <laughs> We're going to put our children. Now, for me, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Because if we go back to before 1954, our ancestors. No, no, 90 minutes to, to the school. that He go to Baltimore to, to uh, FDMG trap. Okay, that's what he's saying. Then he talk about the ancestors, how they used to walk 15 miles in the snow with no shoes on. And they, at the same time, dogs was chasing them. That's what he about to say. I guarantee it. And at that time, that's why it's no big deal to have them on three three hours, at least three hours a day to get to, to the trap school because our ancestors used to have to walk 40 miles in the snow while the hound dogs was chasing and coming up on them. <laughs> watch, watch. And the slave master, they was trying to get them. I said the slave, I said, hey, uh, watch. Back then, they had the horse and the buggy wouldn't let us ride. <laughs> we, we had to get on our foot. <laughs> All we had was a what, was a bottle of whiskey and, and some butter biscuits. <laughs> we, we was, <laughs> watch, I'm telling you, I already know what this guy gonna say. I'm go. I'm already I already know what he gonna say. <laughs> yeah, he be lying. <laughs> he be lying so much. <laughs> And then after that, <laughs> you always do that. And then after that, mm -hmm, the police is gonna track us down. They gonna come on down. I said, don't you do? That. Don't do that, Ubar. And then watch, <laughs> watch. I'm gonna show y'all right now. Watch. I kid you not. Now for me, school dad, of course you gotta make a decision. Are you comfortable with your son driving 90 minutes to school in the morning and driving 90 minutes home after school? That's three now, hours for me, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Because if we go back to before 1954, our ancestors used to walk five hours. To 
told y'all. I told y'all. Y'all give me some credit. Hit the one. I told y'all. I should have cut me up some strawberries, strawberries before we started. We may do it while we're while we're working, because we working, family. We are working. I told y'all. Hit the one. He said five miles. I told y'all. I just told y'all. I told y'all right there. I told y'all. And here we go. They walked five hours because they wouldn't let us get on the bus. And because the white racist watch. I told y'all. The Umar Johnson files. I know this guy more than you do. I mean, I ain't never kicked him with him or nothing. You know, I wouldn't want to, but if he want to sit down, you know, have have some cheesecake with, with me and we want to just talk about, you know, his plans for the school, because he just be making up stuff, I, I, that would be intriguing. But see, I, I know how Umar is. He, you don't have a problem with your kids that get be on the bus for three hours a day. Well, you think about it, back in the day, our ancestors had to, uh, they didn't even have buses back then. They didn't have no cars. They didn't have no buses, family. When when they had the buses, they wouldn't let us get on, so we had to go and with girls of parks and see so just start doing that stuff. Told y'all. He's perfectly predictable. Umar is perfectly predictable. I don't mean to be rude, but I'm I'm cutting me up because I, I I'm I, I'm cutting me up some strawberries because I ain't gonna be getting crazy with with the malnourishment and start getting dehydrated while I'm watching this. It's like somebody said, well, you keep pausing it every two seconds. I know that's what we do. We just, if you just want to watch Umar talk, you ain't going to get through his videos. Okay? You ain't going to get through his video if you watch it without the Cookie Crush chat. I guarantee you. Go, go on and go do it. See? You're going to sit up there like, what is this? This is nothing. See? But we, what we do is we take our time and we cut strawberries. That's right. We Because we, I'm going to open up an uh, all-vegan strawberry shop. Don't think I'm playing. I'm 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 open up me the all vegan strawberry uh, shop, non alcoholic. Okay, that's what Umar said he was going to do. He's going to have a black vegan sports bar, non alcoholic. I could pull up the receipt. He and he was passing it off. Just like he passing this foolishness off, like he really was going to do it. And those people were probably, like, oh yeah, oh yeah, he don't he ain't done. What has he done? He threw two parties with y'all's money. Look at that. Ooh, that look good, don't it? That's right. That's right. That's that strawberry. That's a black strawberry shortcake, a shortcake family. The black one. Okay. That's right. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's a, a, a Granny Archer strawberry pate. That's what we going to do. <laughs> My ancestors levitated the school family. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's the kind of stuff he would say. They didn't need that. The kids, they just they just flew. They flew on the on the space shuttle. That's what he starts saying. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Then if you're going to <laughs> with the <laughs> I don't I don't partake in that kind of stuff. I never have. I'm just I grew up around it and seen too much of it and seen too many people go from that to other stuff. And then they start doing the sherm. You remember that? Just messed so many people up back then. So no, uh, -uh. I, I ain't gonna. I, I mean, I, I would have some vegan cheesecake with him. You know, maybe some Twizzlers too, because those are supposed to allegedly those are vegan too. That's what my wife said. But now, outside of that, maybe a bachelor shake. But outside of that, nah, I'm good, bro. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's get back to it. I told y'all. I told y'all. Uh, D that all said, what's up, man? It says took him 90 minutes to get from his house to Wilmington. I mean, FDMG to Baltimore. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. He said I, it, uh, it took me 50 minutes to uh, 90 minutes to get here. He's talking not from his house. He's talking about from FDMG. All right, that's exactly. All right, that's perfect. I, 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 I'm sorry I missed that, but there, you're absolutely right about that. <laughs> Thank you, D. That is all for the super, super chat. That's a good point. I used to smoke Sherm gangbang. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of gangbangers. That's, that's what it was in my family. It just, they started, it got crazy. It got so crazy. It just was some other stuff. Just way out there. I said, y'all need to, you know. So I grew up around that stuff. I ain't never gone and done no drugs, nothing like that. Uh, only alcohol I had was some honey wine. Uh, and and uh, when I was a kid, my dad let me sip on some uh, some beer one time because we used to go fishing. And he was like, I was like, can I taste it? He said, okay. So he 
he, he tip tilted it over so a little bit was on the tip and i tasted it, and it was so salty i said i didn't like it uh, i don't i never understood why people like beer uh but honey wine is good though and then i used to have uh when i was 23 i had a girlfriend who was 33 and she used to like italian restaurants so we would go there and then uh uh, like uh, on special occasions, like my birthday or whatever, birthday, we would have wine. The wine was okay. It's just, you know, no big deal. I was like, whatever. Um, okay. Uh, and then Bank says, 90 plus minute just to arrive at a haunt. <laughs> yeah. 90 plus minutes just to arrive at a haunted house and get screamed at by a. <laughs> yeah, this is exactly what it is, though. That's wild. Why are you going to put your kids on the bus and just for 90, 90 plus minutes just to get screamed at all day at school by Umar? And then after that, they got to get back on the bus and 90 more minutes at least to get back home. And he, Umar is talking as if this is real. That's what I'm saying. Umar is entertaining, but he's also delusional. And people, there are people who actually listen to this. I don't see why people, how people can separate what he's saying here with everything else that he says, because some people like his messages on other things. Yeah, but you're t you're listening to someone who's loony. It's someone who's completely detached from reality. They're like living in. But see, part of uh, what has happened with Umar over the, the last decade is it's like the amalgamation of. Fantasy land projections of what he wants to do, and then a general message that is accepted by black people as being factual. And sometimes he says stuff that is factual, but then you there's an amalgamation, a conversion of the two. And once they once they're, they they convert, if you put it all together, you realize that you're talking to someone who's completely delusional. And so what he does is is on one hand you have you know the the the, the real Umar who's just way out there throwing everything out there, anything out there. I'm gonna we're gonna do a book club. We're gonna do have a black vegan sports bar. We're gonna have a a, a cemetery. He said all of this. We're gonna have a cemetery at FDM. You're gonna have a black farm a fmg black farm with black pigs he said all this stuff you have that but then you also have him talking you know like the the racism and all this kind of stuff what people don't realize is that he only talks that racism stuff because it brings people in to where they want to support him on the delusional stuff that brings him the money because all this race-based talk that's not what generates money for him all of this illusionary fmg stuff is what brings him the most amount of money but see that whole fmg stuff all that is is it's like delusional where he can say something like, yeah, your kid going to be uh, on 90, 90 minutes just to get to the, this trap bando. Then, then why they're there, I'm going to scream at them and I'm going to take if they act up, I'm going to put them in the black back room, the black room. That's what he said. And we're going to pound their damn chest in. That's what he said. I can pull up the receipt right now. Can you imagine what what parent, reasonable, rational, loving parent, caring parent would send their child to this crazy. And then plus you're going to send them 90 plus minutes to get there and then 90, 90 plus minutes to get back home. So other, other, this is a good point right here. Thank, thank you for the super chat, Banks. Also, thanks to that all for the super chat as well. I appreciate it. Dynamis Baca says, by the time he's done, FMG going to be a nursing home. Yeah. But think about this. The children who were 10 years old when Umar first announced that the school was going to open in 2013, they're now 23. You know, it, it's not going to be too long from now where it's going to be a whole generation of people that said, wait a minute, my generation was supposed to go to that school. But now I'm too old too. 13 years already. And by what Umar allegedly is saying in this video, I haven't watched it yet, that it's going to take another, at least another two years to, for the grand opening. And think get about get, think about this. That even if the school opened in, in, in uh, 2025, Umar already said he's not starting it with 12th grade. So the gr first graduating class won't be for at least another three years. So you, you wouldn't have your first graduating class until 2028, 2029, maybe 2030. By that time, that's 20 years into this foolishness. Okay, now we're talking about a whole generation that didn't, didn't well, I'll tell you. Yeah, so it is a nursing home as of right now. Ain't, ain't nothing going on up there. They're not educating nobody. Who might be up there kicking it, just yelling in the middle of the street. This It's fraud. That's all it is. People, and people need to wake up to this. It's, it's really that simple. It's not complex. It's not. I don't think it's that deep. I, I really don't. Now, I, I'm saying that because I've done all the extensive research and I, I get that. But overall, when I look at this, it's not deep. It's a long con. Nothing more. Uh, Billy Jean says, it's funny how nobody in this lecture acts to see the inside of, of both schools. Now, we're going to get back to the video. We've got 800 people. We hit the like button. I appreciate it.
just to give you guys another and so and most of you guys know this but but if you come new to these videos i've been getting a lot of subscribers again when i wouldn't do more of a subscriber everybody's just like you know what bye bye fred okay now start doing more hey y'all still ain't subscribing no that's see that's wrong y'all most of y'all don't even subscribe that's so, so i'll be coming up here trying to help you all out and have some fun they call only one subscribe i know who you are too that's okay uh most people who follow Umar are unaware of this. Thank you for bringing this up, Billy G. That when Umar purchased these ab abandoned buildings, he put out a promo video. And we can cover it, but we're not going to do it during the slides. We'll cover it again at some point. And in the promo video, he's inside of the larger building, which is most of the value is in the larger building compared to the smaller school, what he calls school on the other side of the street, and then that small gym over there. If you go to the other side of the street, it's the street. There's the bigger building. There's more classroom, more space. That's where the main offices are, are, are located, too, is over there. But then attached to that is this huge gym, relatively speaking, compared to that old rinky dink gym that he'd be walking in. But if you guys remember when he did that promo video, he was he was inside of that larger space and he was inside of that larger gym because he was showing that off as the I don't know what's the word like the. The cream of the crop, as it were. There's another term I can't think of it right now. You know, this this is the the piece that is this stance. You know my you know my uh, uh, my French is really good from the last live stream. Okay? I, my French is I'm just great at it. The, that was supposed to be the the piece that re resonates songs, Cresson, something like that. But if people really think about this, and if you follow Umar enough. You start to you will come start to ask questions. Why is it that he hasn't even shown the that side of the street where the larger buildings are at and gone in there and shown what it looks like in there when that was the primary selling point when he did the promo video? And he hasn't been in there for close to it's been close to four years, if not a little bit over four years now. See, if it takes him. He said 2025, that would be 2019 to 2025, six years just to get operational on that side of the street, the smaller side. How long, much longer do you think it's going to take for the larger, larger buildings over there that he already admitted has way more work that needs to be done over there? He ain't even dealing with it compared to on, on this smaller side of the street. See, the thing is, you Umar Johnson supporters, you're the one who paid for both sides of the street, but he ain't even dealing with the main uh, the, the piece that resists stone. He ain't even dealing with the, the main buildings building because it is one building he says two of them is one they're connected big gym a larger classroom area with the off main offices and stuff he set that aside in fact he's abandoned those abandoned buildings on that side of the street well guess what most of your money went towards acquiring that and if it takes him in to 2025 that's six years just to get the smaller side of the streets the buildings uh going operational well how long how much long do you think before he gets fully operational with both sides of the street another decade after that that would be 16 years by that time we'll be in 2035 hello and a lot of us we older some of us we're gonna be dead by the end <laughs> <laughs> let's be real about it but some of we don't been going to glory by that time okay let's be real about it you get my age you be like you know what you gotta come to grips with it <laughs> okay but this is a good point no at the lecture or even outside lecture they don't ask well what about both the other side of the street the other side of the street what's going on over there he don't even mention it he don't even go in there anymore umar here's a challenge this month okay we got halfway through the month you got about roughly two weeks this month i want you to go over there to the other side of the street, and I want you to give a full walkthrough. And if you do that, I'm going to send you a donation. It's not going to be much, okay? Because I got five kids, but I will send you something. Okay? I'll put a little something on on, on your uh, your tab, on your books. All right, thanks, Billy Jean. Good point. Uh, the dark lenial uh, uh, SC <laughs> Lennon, Why is that uh, mutton mutton chop man still? <laughs> What is a uh, you talk? What what is a mutton chop? I don't. Uh, what is that? <laughs> Let me go look that up. I don't even know what you're talking about. Or maybe I shouldn't look it up because sometimes people used to say stuff. I go look it up. Be something crazy. <laughs> it's a, it's it, the the whiskers on a man's cheeks that shape like a meat chop, narrow at the bottom and broad. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> 
<laughs> That's what it says. Uh, it says a cut of sheep's meat, often containing a section of a rib. <laughs> a facial hairstyle consisting of sideburns without a beard. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Boy, y'all wild. All right. <laughs> let's, let's move on. Okay. Any other soup? Let me get to these real quick. Don't forget time to cut. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I, exactly. It, every time I think about that, I'm disturbed. You know, and for you, Umar Johnson followers, there was a time I have it. You know, most of y'all haven't heard it. And it's just audio where Umar's talking about how he's going to bring these boys back to school after they you know, went on the bus for, for an hour and a half to get a home, allegedly. I guess they're going to have to get back on the bus to come back in the evening time. Basically, they're going to go out there, get off the bus. Their mama going to give them a snack, and they're going to get back on the bus. And they're going to drive back over, over there. Okay? But when they get there, he was talking about how they're going to have a – he said he called a fireside chat, and he's going to cuddle with the boys. I can pull it up. I said, what? I remember when we first heard I was like, what did he just say? And we were shocked. A lady, real quick, too, just, just logistically speaking, what happens if a child gets sick? What happens if a child you know, gets in trouble at school and the parents need to come up there? You mean to tell me that people in Baltimore, the parents, they're going to they're gonna take off. They're going to drive an hour and a half to get up to them trap bandos to get to their kid. That's crazy. It don't even make no sense. No one's going to want. Now, if it's a boarding school, I, I guess. But no one's going to want to be away from their child where it's going to take at least an hour and a half to get to their child during the school day. Because anything can happen. You know what I'm saying? That's like sometimes, I, you know, what? what I, I worry about my kids all the time. You know, I really do. I, I, I want to make sure they get to school. I want to make sure they get home. I don't have to tell you. Like, she's like, you know, just calm down. They're going to get, I say, yeah, but what if this, what if, that's how I am, you know? And they get home, you know, and sometimes it's because it's cause a couple of times the bus didn't even show up. I said, what? What kind of world? And I don't even call the parents. The kids call the parents. But see, we was kids. We didn't have no cell phones, so we could call nobody. They'd tell the parents, you know, and I don't even remember the bus never not coming or they'll get a replacement. But they'd be like, you know what? The bus didn't come. Oh, well, <laughs> call your mama, call your daddy. But can you imagine your child being an hour and 30? This goes to show you, Umar, he ain't even dealing with no kids. Because if you're dealing with kids, you, you think about these things. Call your mom. Call, call what? So your mom and daddy got to drive an hour and a half to get there, then an hour and a half to get back, and then they're gonna have to be there for a while anyway to figure out what the problem is, right? So these parents are gonna be driving three, four hours to go pick their kid up. That's crazy. Well, that's without traffic, okay? Right. Yeah, every time I think about that cuddle thing, it's just so disturbing. And Umar John, most Umar John Smalls, they've never heard it, but we played it on here. You can put that in a rant video too. Okay, we got a call. Let, let, before we get to our call, let, let me go ahead and get to these other super chats real quick. Make sure Monica says, notice Umar's pattern of speech during his seminars. He starts off saying something reasonable that we all can agree on, right? Then the next sentence after next becomes slightly more problematic. You're absolutely right. That's a good, that's a good observation. I think that's one of the, the allures that Umar uses. He'll say some stuff that makes sense, but if you let him talk long enough, it, at a certain point, it just gets wild. And I'm sure as we watch this video, it's going to get crazy. It's going to get more and more crazy as we keep watching it. I guarantee it. How, how are you going to go? Uh, and and I, I've said this too. It's like uh, with, with Umar, there's this, it's, it's like one thing, there's the reality part, but then there's this delusional part, but they get so intertwined where he starts talking and they just run into each other. And then there's people who sit back and there's some people I'm like, are you serious? But I know that there are some people like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I'm going to put my children in this school. It uh, takes me an hour and a half to get to them. If I, for whatever reason, they ever, ever have to get to them, they're going to have to be on the bus for an hour and a half to get there and another hour and a half to get back on. That don't make no sense. But there are some people, they'll, they'll believe in that stuff because what it is, it starts off saying something reasonable that they can agree on. That's a good point right there. Very good point. Thank you, Mr. Monica, for the soup chat. Everyone else, too, for the soup chat. I think I got to everyone. Oh, wait, Black Wolf says, Leonard, you know damn well if Umar go over uh, to the big building, the conjuring gun is going to come out. <laughs> Ain't no telling what's over there. Ain't no telling. We have no idea, Black Wolf, because he ain't been over there. Isn't that interesting? It's, that's telling in and of itself. Then we're going to take our first call. That's telling in and of itself. If he ain't even gone over there in years, what does that tell people? He don't even show it. Umar, show, go on over there and show what's, the, what's the, going on up over there. We want to see everything. We want to see whether electricity's on. It might be. We want to see if, if there's missing uh, ceiling tiles. I'm sure there is. We want to see if you've done any renovations over there. I know you haven't. 
We want to see if there's any holes in the roof like before. We want to see water damage, if there's any water damage in there. We want to see what furniture is in there. Don't take us in the bathrooms, though, because I already know what the deal is in there. Okay, so we've already seen that. But th that's soul telling the, the big building. Hashtag big, build, big building tune day. He don't even show that anymore. And, and it's been at least at least four years. You my John Fox, y'all should be asking that question. Okay. They're gonna be gremlins in there, jump on him. <laughs> Zombies and gremlins. All right, thanks, Black Wolf, for super chat. Brittany also says, Umar followers think he is on the same level when uh, Noah built the ark, cult following at his farm. Yeah, a lot of what he's saying, it sounds like fairy tale stuff. It sounds like things that, you know, like um, what's the term? Uh, allegories. You know, did, did, did Noah actually put every single animal on the ark that was alive at that time? No. It's impossible. It's allegory. It's allegorical. There's people still looking for the ark. Y'all need, need to stop. Okay? And the dimensions are in the Bible, too. There's a visitor dimension. Yeah, you're going to get all the animals from all around the world? Really? What about the, all the animals on the other side of the ocean? What, what about them? What, they swim over there? They, they, <laughs> anyway, we don't even have to get into that right now. It's allegory. And that's fine. It teaches, it teaches important lessons about faith and, and you know, doing God's will, even in the midst of, of you know, ridicule and people not believing you. I get it. But that's Umar, because Umar will say some stuff that is so outlandish. And then his followers are like, yeah, OK. Like when he said they're going to build an observatory on top of the roof over there. At FTMD, and you're going to be able to see the surface of planets. He said that. The technology does not exist today where you have an observatory on planet Earth where you can see the surface of any planet out there. You could might, might see Saturn in the rings. You might be able to, you know, but you're not going to see the actual surface of a planet. The technology does not exist as an observatory. Now, you can, you can launch a rocket and you, you put a, a satellite that can take pictures and it gets close enough and, and that may be able to do it. But in terms of an a, a observatory here on Earth, no, the technology does not exist. But his cold falling will, yeah, okay, well, yeah, that makes sense. All right, thanks, Brittany. Also, thanks to uh, Black Wolf, and I think I got all of the super chats so far. Everyone else, everyone else who sent in super chats, thank you so much. Okay, let, let's take a quick break. Let, let's take a call. This is from Whole Southern Cooks. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. Oh, my pleasure. Um, thank you for having me. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so I just wanted to share a little quick story about my experience with Umar. Like many people, first of all, I want to tell you thank you for what you do. Because You're welcome. I honestly feel like Umar is a bad epidemic. Like mm. he's taking a lot of money from a lot of people and he's really making it hard for other black entrepreneurs to have that respect, in my opinion, because he's had millions of dollars and he's done absolutely nothing but buy horrible condition buildings with it, like nothing mm -hmm. else in my opinion. And I think that even though we laugh and joke on your channel, you're really like an activist and, and, and you inspire people and educate people to stay away from his nonsense. I think it's so mm. much bigger than what just, just, you know, CCC and everything, like you're really doing mm -hmm. Lord's work in my opinion. So I just want to oh, say thank that, you. Thank but you. okay. So long story short, I heard of Umar off and on throughout the years. And like a year ago, I still happened to catch one of his lives and he said he needed, you know, how he says, oh, my brothers and sisters, I'm looking for somebody to do this or that. So he said, I'm looking for somebody who can help create the menu for the cafeteria. And I was like, oh, okay, I, I, I have remember. a bakery. I remember. Yeah, I remember I that. Like, hit okay. the, anyone else remember that? Could crush that? Hit the one. I remember he said that. I was like, okay, I, this is something that I can do. This is something I can do. And I'm not rich by any means, but like, I'm willing to invest in something worth the cause if I can mm. or whatever. So here I go thinking he, you know, not knowing the other mess about him, thinking that, you know, I'm about to be a part of something great. I, you know, I link with him. He puts his number out there. So I, you know, contact him. First thing this man says to me is, yeah, um, you know, I take care of my mother, so uh, I need somebody to teach me how to cook. And I was like, huh? This is not feeling very professional. Like, 
Oh my okay. God. And so then, so it gets better. So then, you know, I, I'm trying to keep it business because here I am thinking this guy is like somebody who's going to be groundbreaking and innovational and all this type of stuff. So we get to talking and I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm willing. I tell him I'm willing. This is one of his grand opening launches. And I tell him I'm willing to for free cater the entire grand opening. Mm. And I tell him that I'm willing to do the school cafeteria menu because I'm used to working with all types of different foods. And, you know, he mentioned, oh, I want there to be vegan raw lunch, which I actually told him I was like, that might be difficult for some people to digest. You might need more diversity. I'm trying mm -hmm. to talk real business with this man. So then he's like, well, let me see your bakery portfolio. I send him my portfolio. He sees my pick and then he, this man trying to fly me out. I'm like, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> so my spouse, he, I'm telling him, you know, I, I was, it's funny, but I was so disappointed. So I told yeah. my spouse and he was like, oh, my God, why did you talk to that clown? Like, he is so stupid. Like, oh, my gosh, he, he just completely wasted my time. He didn't try to get no money out of him out of me, but he was trying to get something else. Yeah, that's and I right. just couldn't yeah. believe how he was just so forward with trying to hook up. I'm like. What? What, what what was the did he give a reason though to fly you out though? Did he say, you know, I need you to come look he, at the yeah, meat? Yeah, he was like, first thing he said was, Well, um, he asked where the bakery was located. I told him I'm in the Carolinas. He was like, Oh, well, I'll be in that way sometime. Maybe we can hook up and have dinner. And I and, and again, I'm not trying to assume the worst out of out of this black brother at the time. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, okay, well, you know. Yeah, maybe we could do that and I can bring you, you know, a gift basket of my, you know, items and you can have an opportunity to try them. And then mm -hmm. he's like, or, you know, if you like, you can come this way. You know, I, I don't mind bringing a, a, a sister, you know, a beautiful sister out. And I'm like, oh, my God, this this I can't tell you what I said because it's not very Christian. And I try my best mm. to be Christian. But I was Amen. like, yo, Amen. did this. <laughs> I was like, yo, this is dumb. This is so, he, he's such a clown. He's such a clown. Yeah, did and he know that you were married? No. I mean, I, okay. you know, when I was speak business to him, I, I didn't feel the need, you know, to yeah, I let get him you. know that. Mm -hmm. But it was just so crazy because it was just, in my mind, I was like, does is he not worried that I could put this out about him? Like, is he not worried he that I could I say something? And and it, it was it was it was just it was very uncomfortable. It was it was uncomfortable, mm. and so I tried to just professionally exit the situation. And I was like, okay, this is bananas. I guess I was wrong. And then I turned from being a supporter to now I'm over here in CCC making jokes because like. <laughs> <laughs> It's honestly a way to cope with my disappointment. I'm, I'm, I, I know it may sound corny, but I really had hopes mm. that this guy was going to come and do some great things. I'm not gullible. I'm not one of these people who like follow behind ignorance or whatever. I really only saw the good images of him. And then when you dive into the iceberg of him, like how you've taken the time to do, you're like, whoa, this dude is not about nothing. He uses mm. these buildings as just a front. He ain't about doing nothing. So many people, and I know it's so many people who've offered him free services. And I don't know if you know yeah. about the cost of quality food, but that was several thousands of dollars of services I was willing to donate for support of this school opening. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, yo, but anyway, I just wanted to share that. And I just wanted to thank you for what you do, because it's way more than the laughs. Like you yeah. have saved me so much money because I just think oh, well, if good. I would have donated to him, like, I'm glad I got away with only wasting some time. Mm -hmm. Like, so mm -hmm. I just want to say that. And, you know, that's all. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for sharing your story. And just know that you're not the only one out there. I've had people uh, reach out to me that they have similar experiences with Umar and they went for the okie doke and got caught up in all kind of uh, foolishness. So uh, thank the Lord that you uh, had discernment early enough to not get yourself caught up in some foolishness out there because he he's definitely out here. Uh, trying to take advantage of black women. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what's crazy too. Like it, 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 it was. 
it was very disappointing. And to be honest, mm. I'm still disappointed. I'm still offended. Yeah. I'm still like wondering how much money he's collecting from people who don't, who haven't had the opportunity to discover your channel and unveil all of his nonsense. Like how mm. many people stumble upon him thinking he's this great innovative scholar and donate thousands of dollars only to just be told the same story over and over again. Oh, it's not happening this year. It's going to happen next year. Like, mm -hmm. so for me, your, your community is a way to cope with the disappointment. Like it really is. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, you know, so thank you for that. And that's all I wanted to You're say. You're very welcome. All right. Thank well, thanks for calling in, sis. God bless you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, there you have it. it, it uh, her story isn't uncommon. I, I've talked with people that, you know, they, they didn't want to share openly. They just said, listen, I just want to let you know that this is what happened and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but they didn't want to come on. They don't want people to know their names or anything like that. And, and some of them, uh, at least uh, uh, two that I can remember, they were like, well, I don't want to uh, put my name out there and anything like that because retaliation, whether that's from Umar or from uh, Umar's father. Because you remember what, how they did the conscious stripper, uh, quote unquote conscious stripper, uh, when she came out and talked about Umar. That's another example. He preyed on her situation, too. So there's different ways that he does this. In, in her situation, it was more like, okay, I have sons that, you know, they're in dire uh, need of, of, you know, guidance. And one of them was in prison and I'm a single mom. I'm out here stripping, blah, blah, blah. When Umar comes in, yeah, well, I can, I can, I can help you with, with getting stuff on. But see, that for him, it wasn't about helping her. It was about using and abusing her. Okay. Well, that's no different than, than a lot of the other stories that I've heard. That's what it's about. Now, that's one approach for Umar. Okay. But another one is, okay, well, I need, I need someone to put together a menu. I remember he would ask, he was asking for that. Um, in fact, he did that in his, his February 2019 video he was doing, but he's done it other times too. Well, well I, he uses that. I remember I told y'all, why was he collecting resumes? Well, he would say, I need your resume, but I also need your picture. Why would you need the person's picture? Well, in particular for a woman, you need their picture so that you can say, okay, is she attractive enough? Well, this is Umar. This is how he thinks. Okay, is it? Okay. Now you have all of her information. You got her contact information. Well, let me hit her up when I'm in that city and see if she wanted to we get, go on out to dinner. See, this is predatory. This is why I've told people over and over again, it's not just about the school situation, it's about how he's, per, uh, not just perpetuation of fraud, but also he's out here operating like a predator and, and on you black women. And all you black women get mad at me and some of y'all send me these messages over the years, I'm trying to help you out. And here's another example, and there's plenty of examples of women who've been uh, taken advantage of by Umar, used and abused. But thank the Lord that this woman, she was able to see the truth earlier on so that she didn't get caught up in a lot of foolishness like a lot of these other women have. And they, they're, 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 not only are they disappointed in Umar, some of them are disappointed in themselves because they got themselves caught up in all this foolishness. And they know that if they came out and said something, that they'll be judged by it and you know they'll be ridiculed by it and people look at look down upon them, that type of thing. See? So that's why I, I think, yeah, this this the my uh, Umar Johnson videos are important for different reasons. And one of them is simply to put the message out there for you. Want to be careful. You got to be careful out here. And he's betrayed so many different people and he's out here operating like a predator. And you all just need to be careful. It's, it's really that simple. Uh, thanks for calling in, too, sis. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, let's get back to the video. We got about 900 people in the video. Y'all hit the like button. I appreciate y'all. Let me know how we're doing on likes. Let's get back to the video here. School. Now, for me, I wouldn't have a problem with that because if we go back to before 1954, our ancestors used to walk five hours to school and five hours back at night. So you shouldn't care about 90 minutes, but because most Negroes are motivated by convenience, you would rather leave your son and we hate black kids, Baltimore charter school, where he'd be an over medicated, special educated. That's what you're going to do. And then when I say, why he ain't at my school, Dr. Umar, your tuition was $500 a month, and I just really couldn't afford it. And while you saying that shit, you got on Balenciaga, Gucci, Louis, and 500 pounds of dead Asian women's hair on your head. See, I was so disrespectful. No respect for you women. It's very clear. No respect whatsoever. Uh, okay, three forty nine. What was our goal? I thought I thought it was three. What was it three fifty? Yeah, three fifty. We need one more like. I have to get the other quick crush that light uh, turned on right there. <laughs> so, listen, somebody somebody said earlier earlier ain't nothing bigger than the cookie crush. <laughs> King Kong ain't got nothing on. <laughs> That's funny. Show second one. I had to like that to come back to it. Fiction doesn't make goals. You're absolutely right about that. <laughs> That's a good point right there. That's very 
Very wise. Fiction don't make gold. <laughs> All right. Lewis Duck says, it's crazy how people attack the people exposing scammers and protect the scammer. Mm -hmm. People get brainwashed and internalize the rhetoric and feel personally attacked when you expose the scammer. Yeah, that's what exactly what's happening to me. I, I'm not on here to act like I'm a victim either, but I, I've had to deal with a whole lot of stuff. Some of y'all, y'all know about some of the stuff, but there's a, a lot of stuff I had to deal with online. You know, with just people doing all kinds of crazy stuff. I remember one time this guy, well, let me, let me, I'm just going to leave it. I'm just going to leave it. Because I'm, I'm a firm believer that in, at the end of the day, you're going to get uh, what it is that you give. And if you out here doxing people, uh, you out here uh, lying on people, you out here threatening people, you out here taking advantage of people, guess what? Karma's undefeated. Ku Klux is undefeated too, but karma's undefeated. Right? But but yeah, people will attack the people who are exposing scammers like Jay Morrison, Polite, Umar Johnson, uh, Cesar Pena, and uh, uh, what's the other guy? Uh, DJ Envy. I heard uh, earlier today that Cesar Pena filed a lawsuit against Tony the Closer for what was it, ten million dollars or something like that? I think it was ten million. So, yeah, it comes with the territory. And I don't get up here acting like I'm a victim. I'm not. I just I recognize that early on that it's just, you know, it just comes with the territory. But see, my intent has always been to get the word out, to keep people uh, protected. That's always been my intent. You know. Uh, thanks, Lewis, for Super Chat. I appreciate it. Uh, and not just uh, for, for uh, women. It's also for children. That's why whenever Umar says something crazy about children, I tend to go off because I don't like hearing that. And then that's when I'll always stop and say, wait a minute, he should be talking like that because they're also keeping children safe. I'm really big on that. See, but the same people trying to keep women safe, trying to keep and, you know, keep men safe, too. But I, the way I look at it is, is if you if you a real man, you ain't going to let Umar clown you like that. You're just not going to do it because you'll notice he's not a real man in the first place. Now, here's and I'm not uh, demeaning uh, women or children. What I'm saying is that Umar, he'll run game on a woman. He knows how to run game and to, and to get you all caught up in some foolishness, but he can't run game on real men. Maybe some of, the, some of these men who go along with the okie doke, but real men, he can't run a, a game on. And, and truth be told, uh, the way that Umar operates, y'all remember when and we played, I think it was last week, it may have been this week, when there was a woman who had called in and got advice from Umar and it messed up the situation with their son, dealing with the IEP and the services that he was, he was getting. She didn't tell the husband. When the husband finally finds out, he calls Umar on one of his uh, black uh, teleconference, whatever, black family or parent advocate teleconference. He calls Umar and he confronts Umar on it. But you see how Umar couldn't handle that? See, he, he doesn't want to deal with men directly. See, He wants to deal with women directly because he feels as if he can run game on you all. He can't run the same game on, on the men. And what I mean by that is he can, he can, he can run game on y'all. Y'all, y'all, yeah, y'all send him some money, but you might give up the draws. He can't run uh, on a real man. He can't run game on him so that the real man's going to be like, you know what? I'm going to give you some money. I'm going to give up the draws. Make sense? <laughs> it's a different thing. It's a, it's a different thing. But that's why he focuses and he mainly targets single black mothers or women who he perceives to be single. They might end up being married. Okay. All right. Thanks, Louis Luck. All right. I feel like I'm going off too much tonight. Okay, let, let me, uh, did I get to all of the other super chats here? Uh, funny, Umar had no problem with Suki Hana's weed. Yeah, I know, but that's what he likes. I already told people that's what he likes that. The same thing with the conscious stripper. He liked that, that weed. That's what he liked. And that's, that's fine. You know, I like natural rest. I am always have been. I just, that's just my thing. I just, I, I, just, I love it. Okay. And if, if my wife got uh, the, the weave. I, I mean, okay, you're going to get weave. That's fine. That's your business. I'm gonna love you anyway, right? And she got a jerk curl, we're gonna have a problem. <laughs> I ain't playing no jerk. That's the one thing I put my foot down on the jerk curl. To <laughs> some of the younger people, what's a jerk curl? Huh? That's one thing. I ain't playing no games, women. I don't care how fine you is. You got a jerk curl, we got a problem. <laughs> she called him, didn't know she was on him. <laughs> Get out of here. I know. Umar was like, oh, okay, yeah, but that's no, I've already told people that, didn't I already told people, I told people that years ago that that was what he was up to. He's so sneaky, <laughs> it's like a slithering snake, just sneaky and shit. 
Yeah, I'm going to need some woman. I need somebody to do the yoga classes. Then there's someone who do the yoga. Okay, can you show me doing doing the doggy pose? That's what that's what Umar. That's what he do. <laughs> I used to do the yoga. I used to be in a yoga class. We do that dog now, man. That, that's the time. I was like, wait a minute. Let me go ahead and meditate. <laughs> Y'all got me wild. All right. Thanks. Thank you so much. That's a good twin for me, AK. Uh, also, Cheryl second board. You down with OPP? <laughs> yeah, you know me. All right. And also, thanks for a second. All right, let's get to it because we, we uh, I, I've, been, I've been running my mouth too much on this live stream. Let's get going here. <laughs> here we go. So if you really wanted to pay for your son to go to my damn school, you would have sacrificed your white woman looks. Huh? And that fake Chinese made Gucci. <laughs> and he would have been on the damn bus. But Baltimore Mel. This is so ridiculous. And I can pull up a receipt that shows Umar posting Gucci on his Instagram because someone sent it to him for a gift. Probably a woman because ain't no man going to send it. They want some man going to send it. <laughs> that one. That kind. But a regular old, old man, he ain't real man. We ain't going to send another man no Gucci. <laughs> we ain't going to send y'all nothing. <laughs> so I'm going to assume it was a woman that sent him that Gucci bag. And he showed it, put it up there on the, on the thing. Hit the one. He got them them gifts, gifts, gifts. But he'll turn that and flip that around and say, y'all shouldn't have no Gucci. Same thing with the Nikes. I remember the day he bought him, bought him Nikes for his birthday. He was so happy. He was walking around just with the Nikes. I was looking at my Nikes. Yeah. Hit the one. All right. Because the school is named after Frederick Douglass, and this is the city where he used to live, and this is the city from which okay. he escaped. I intend to have a bus here every day. I'm just giving <laughs> you a bus. Bye, bye. Take the so you drive? I want me some French fries. You got a CBL or whatever you need. If you got access to it, he did. You want to make he, some hustle money? You need to be hustle money. Hear that? No, he did. He someone sent him a Gucci bag. He put it on his Instagram. <laughs> Look at all the ones in here. Gifts and panties. <laughs> yeah, they sent us some panties one time too. He put it on his Instagram. I said, what? I don't want and let me let me just stop. Okay, yeah, one ninety six. Like, oh, I gotta go put the thing up. I'm sorry, Suki doing too much. Imagine what I, I don't even know. I didn't have any looking at her. I remember when the people first brought her up. I didn't know who she was. Then I looked it up. I said, okay, that's enough. <laughs> All right, let me go light this other thing up and, and, and let me let this play for a little. While. I'm running. My if mind. you got a CDL or whatever you need, if you got access to the bands, you want to make some hustle money, you need to be texting me, Doctor Umar. CDL, I got access family. to an 18 passenger minivan. No problem. We can put 17 boys on there because we need a minivan assistant with you. So that's 17 black boys from Baltimore. Excuse me, 16 black boys from Baltimore who be coming back and forth to FDMG every day. The choice is yours. That's but we intend to have a bus from Baltimore. We intend to have a bus from Maryland Eastern Shore. That's where my family come from. Black boys will come from there. It will be a bus from Camden, New Jersey. <laughs> Y'all trying to get me in trouble. Uh oh, no, 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 don't even try it, John. You ain't gonna get me in trouble. <laughs> Y'all funny though. All right, here we go. There will be a bus from Trenton, New Jersey every day. There will be a bus from Dover, Delaware, and there will be a bus from yeah. Wilmington itself. There will be a bus from Philadelphia, and there will be a bus from Chester, Pennsylvania, where Dr. King earned his seminary degree. Those will be the eight places where we will pick up boys. So if you got a son that's going to be in the second, third, or fourth grade, there's a strong chance we'll be all Can you imagine a child who's in the second and third grade sitting on a bus for an hour and a half to get to school and then an hour and a half to get? How old are babies when they, in the, what do you say, second grade? This is so ridiculous. The magic school bus. <laughs> get on the magic school bus. Do -do 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 -do. <laughs> that's Mario. Do -do 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 -do. Get on the magic school bus. Y'all know Little Richard did that song. Y'all know that? Little, he's so underrated, people have no idea. So many people came through Little Richard, including uh, James Brown. And if y'all go and listen to, because see, a lot of people only know Little Richard from uh, Tootie Fruity, Home Rooter. But if you guys go back and listen to his discography, which I've done, because they have it on Spotify, you'll see the influence that he had on James Brown. I think he also had, uh, he also had, uh, who's the guitar player? One of the all time, I can't remember if you think of his name right now. He, he had so many great people come through his band. He's so underrated. Um, and then the, the late, was it Otis Redding? I know you would know. Yeah, I'll take your word for it. This guy, he know all his music. He know music better than me. I went to school for music. Uh, 
the lady who plays Miss Rizzo played in Star uh, Trek, the original. She was the nurse in Star Trek, the original. They had a crush on Spock. I can't remember her name right now. But she also was the voiceover. She also played in Star Trek. D she was in Star Trek Next Generation, too. Yeah, because she was she was. Uh, yeah, she was in Star Trek Next Generation, Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Next Generation, she was Deanna Troy's mama from Beta Z. Uh, they were Beta Zoids. She, I had a crush on, on Deanna Troy when I was a, a kid. Uh, when I was in like 11th grade, uh, but she was also on uh, Deep Space Nine as the love interest for uh, uh, Odo, who passed a couple of years ago, rest in peace. But she also, her voice is the voice of the computer, though, for for, um, for Next Generation. I don't know if it is. For, yeah, just for Next Generation. All right. And I think, though, for Deep, for the Deep Space Nine, too, I don't know. Anyway, I'm going off on tangent. All right, here we go. Open in August of 2024. Very strong chance. If we miss August, we will either do January of 25 or August of 25. No later than August of 25, but I'm pushing for August of 24. Second, third, fourth grade black boys. We're going to teach them agricultural science. I was at the Black Farmers <laughs> Conference yesterday. Delaware Here State. he go again. I was doing at the Black Farmers Conference as a psychologist. Because at the FDMG Academy, we would teach them agricultural science. So guess what? I'm trying to build a relationship with all the black farmers in Delaware. Why? So we can take your son to a different farm every month so they can learn how to farm from every black farmer that's still in the state, brothers and sisters. And then I'm going to organize the black farmers of Delaware so we can have what? A black produce market at FDMG once a month so you can drive 90 minutes up the road and get all the fruits and vegetables you need for the month. I can't believe we got all these black... Okay, first of all, why are you going to drive an hour and a half to go get out one way? Three hours all together to go get some fruits and vegetables. That don't make no sense. Which one of y'all in the cook course has willing to drive three hours to go get some fruits and vegetables instead of driving 15 minutes to go to your produce, local produce store, go to Walmart? And then he says it's, you can get enough for a whole month. Listen, if you want to go pick up some, some fruits and vegetables, it's not going to last for a whole month. What are you talking about, Craig? This is so ridiculous. I got to eat these strawberries because they're going to go bad in about three days. I already know. Trust me. I know all these things. I got these little, these what they call them, cuties. I got to eat. They're going to be gone. They're going to go bad in about three days. So what are you talking about, Umar? You might be able to hold on to some potatoes for two or three weeks, but then they start growing little things on, on the side. But these fruits and vegetables not going to last for a month. What are you talking about? That's right. <laughs> Got a little gangster in me and I'm a nerd. <laughs> That's right. That's how I do things, family, because I'm Big Papa. <laughs> I double ups on everything. <laughs> and yeah. And you know, darling well, the organic uh, the vegetables and fruit, they don't last before 15 minutes. <laughs> After you buy them, they start going to bed bad after about 15 minutes. Yeah, he don't know nothing about no fresh produce. What is he talking about? Anyway, let's go. Do market at FDMG once a month, so you can drive ninety minutes up the road and get all the fruits and vegetables you need yeah, for the doctor, month. Yeah. I can't believe we got all these black farmers and nobody has organized them yet to bring the produce direct to our community. Every time you want something organic, you got to get from a damn pilgrim or a damn Amish bunny. Yeah. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. Mm. Whole food, something like that. <laughs> I don't mean to be eating. But listen, all this yelling and screaming needs to stop. Okay, Umbutu, you need to stop all this yelling and screaming. The Umar start yelling and screaming when women start uh, going, yeah, mm-hmm. Notice that he'll start yelling and screaming. For one, he just, oh, they, they into me now. Let me start grazing up. But the other thing is he don't want to hear anyone to hear now. <laughs> I'm going to drop my fork. He don't want nobody else to be get caught up with what them praising him. He said, you know, praise me, but do it quietly, queen. And he started yelling, watch. <laughs> and women, you got to stop that. He did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to have once a month. We're going to get. No, stop it. That lady right there that's talking, she just got done having a Big Mac fries and a couple of tostados from Taco Bell. What are you talking about? <laughs> 
<laughs> he said, "Listen, Queen, you want you want some, you want a potato?" She like, "Huh? <laughs> a potato? What?" She said, "If it didn't run before they killed it, I don't want it." But she shows sitting up there, mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> up there sound like Father David. Father David came back too. We go about to get into that one of these days. He actually had video of him. Up there, it sounded like a runaway slave. <laughs> let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. That's, you know, we love, we love, we uh, totally love and adore Father David. Okay. Here we go. And we not giving up on the school in Baltimore either, family. I need y'all to keep your eyes on. We should be able to find a school here with FDMG air. So your son ain't got to take that 90 minute drive. Do you know that there was a school in Baltimore I wanted before we got to school in Delaware? Yes. There was a school in Baltimore ready to go, but they wanted a million dollars and we didn't have it. I tried to talk the cracker down and he wasn't here going for it. We was this He's talking about, I think that's the school that he was up there acting like he was going to buy it. And he was talking about they had a million dollars. That was in 2017. I could pull it up. I think that's where he was in. He was in Baltimore because he was like, Baltimore, when, when we going to get because he was out there. So he went to a school. Do I need to pull it up? He, he was in Baltimore. I believe he was in Baltimore. I could be wrong about that, but he, but yeah, he was in Baltimore to lecture. So he was looking for a school in the area so that he can say he was looking for a school while he was talk speaking out there. So he can say, yeah, I was just looking at a school in Baltimore. Y'all go ahead and, and send me the money. Yeah. See, you see that? I can pull it up right now. I ain't going to do it. Cooker said, don't want me to do it. I ain't going to do it. He's like, Baltimore, we need another million. So here he is now in 2023. Six years later, running the same game on you, Baltor you Baltorians. I don't know what they call y'all, Balt Balt Baltorians, Balt Baltans. The only thing I know about Baltimore is the Orioles from back in the day because they had Cal Ripken Jr. That was it. Yeah, I don't got to pull it up because someone said they remembered it. <laughs> but I sure can pull it up. Y'all know I got the receipt. See, there's somebody else say, okay, I ain't pulling it up. Ba ba Baltimoreans. Is that what it is? Yeah, Baltimore. I, you know, I don't know. Yeah, Baltimore Orioles. <laughs> he said, can we get another million, fam? You can do it, Lenny. I sure can. I sure could. And, you know, I can do it quickly because I have an archive that I put it in a special folder. And that's what we're going to do right now, family. I'm going to pull up special request videos. And then I'm going to scroll through Umar Johnson dancing at the block party, Umar Johnson vibing to Tupac, Umar Johnson Academy animation, uh, Umar Johnson Vlad uh, rant, Umar Johnson cultural caravan where he was up there uh, uh, tripping. <laughs> and it's just Umar Johnson uh, uh, admits lust for white women. Uh, Umar Johnson, FDG Academy announcement. Umar Johnson compliments a white woman. Hey, gorgeous. Right. I got other ones on here, too. But which one am I looking for? It ain't even in this folder. <laughs> I don't think it's in this folder, family. It's in one. No, it's in this other one right here. Hold on. Because I played it the other day. Y'all talking all that mess, and now I can't find the actual video. What is cobweb? What is a cobweb over here? Here, looking like FDMG. I'm going through each one of these folders, but I know the only one I can just open up another browser and just anyway. I even got the the uh, Miguel Coxon video in here too. Yeah, it's not it's not in here. I'll find it and I'll pull it up. Let me just let it play. I'll be right back. Close to being in Baltimore. I forget the name of the school. I'm sure they sold it by now because this was about seven years ago when we was hunting. Yep, I was exactly. Baltimore. Then when I did didn't I just say that? Baltimore. 2017, I just told y'all I just told y'all that. Did, didn't I say seven or I said six years ago? Cook your what did I say? I'm pulling it up now for sure. See, I, I told y'all and then he, he actually said exactly, see? Um, another million. There it is right there. What did I say? Uh, could crush that? What, what number did I give? Anybody remember? I don't mean to be braggadocious or nothing, but you know, I just, I, I, I'm just, I just called it. 
let me go pull this up right here. It's 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 under this other folder. I'm not even gonna tell you what the name of this folder is. All right. Here it is right here. Watch this. Yeah, I said 2017. Yeah, that's about right. Yep. Six, seven years ago. Yep. So I was right on it. I said it. I told y'all. Now I'm now I'm providing the receipt to prove what I said. Okay. I'm not gonna say something and just lie to people. I don't expect you to believe because people do that all the time. They done it to me. Look at him just creeping around. Ain't nobody else around. I'm gonna eat me some of these strawberries. We just gonna wash this. We got nine of y'all hit the like button. I'd really appreciate it, family. I'll really make sure you subscribe to me because I will be setting this to where only subscribers can comment and uh, chat in the chat room soon. So please, if y'all do that, I appreciate it. It's just clicking a button. That's all. See, he was out there in Baltimore, and w whatever city he would go to, he would do this at that time. He would be in Chicago. Y'all got to see that one in Chicago, because the guy, he said, hey, this school right here, and the guy was like, it's not a school. <laughs> the guy in the background, it was so funny. But he, this was what he was doing for many years to continue to, to extend this scam indefinitely. So he's in Baltimore. He finds this uh, building over here. I guess, I guess it looks a nice school. It was just on the inside. They got a gym. Lunch room. If he was just on the inside, why didn't he show it? See? Class space, office. He's literally walking up to this building, though, when he starts. It's not like he was already there. Such a liar. Space, big parking lot, all the land around it. It's a pretty Pan nice African spot. Potatoes. So Baltimore, what's up, Baltimore? <laughs> Only the Pan-African potatoes, right? All right. All right. They stakes of uh, good twin form, the AK. Baltimore, we need another million. Baltimore, can we get another? Baltimore, we need another man. He was in Baltimore, and he said we need another man. If you say you need another man, that means you already have a man, right? But didn't I just call this? I just told y'all, and here's a receipt right here. Another million. This was 2017, I believe. So we're talking uh, six years later. And this could actually be. Let me let me see if I have the actual. Let's go. Hold on one second. This was November. Of, yeah, November of 2017. Yeah, I have it. I have it actually archived there under that. Uh, November of uh, November or December of 2017. Okay. Not just feel me. I need that Kwanzaa. So make sure y'all drop some slash Dr. Umar. Get them donations up. I need some Christmas gifts. You feel me? I need that Kwanzaa. So make sure y'all drop something in the mail. FDMG Academy, PO Box 6872, Philadelphia, PA. One nine one three two. So he's asking for donations for a school, but he says he needs the donations for Christmas gifts and Kwanzaa gifts. Hello, he he tells people he tells people what his intentions are. Four hundred forty. Okay, cool. Four hundred forty. Our, our goal for to, tonight, and we're well, we're not going to be here too much longer. Our goal for tonight is five hundred. So we're, we're we're really close. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all. Love y'all. Let's keep going here. We're going to get one of these schools. We already know that. He sure the one does. In Pennsylvania wasn't bad either. You feel me? The one in Pennsylvania wasn't bad either. All right, I'll leave it at that because we got to get back here. I want to want to move this along here. Here we go. Mount Vernon, New York. The campus wouldn't rent to me. Then I went to uh, Cleveland, Ohio, Cleveland Heights. I was going to rent that Catholic school. They said no. Then I went to Trenton, New Jersey. I was going to rent that Catholic school. They said no. Mm -hmm. I went to Philly to buy that Catholic school. They said no. And then we ended up in Wilmington. You got it. And I don't have a problem with that because Marcus Garvey incorporated the Black Star Line in Wilmington. Frederick Douglass escaped from slavery to freedom in Wilmington. Harriet Tubman's main benefactor was in Wilmington. Bob Marley used to spend his summers with his mother in Wilmington before he became the Bob Marley that you know. So I don't have a problem with Wilmington, brother. So what? What that got to do with anything? You still ain't got no school open. By the way, that the, 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 from what I remember, Umar said it himself. I could be wrong, but he said it himself. My memory serves me right. He said that the main benefactor was a white man from Wilmington. Anybody remember that? I could be wrong, but my memory, you know, I'm getting a little older. My birthday is in a couple of days. I'm getting a little older. But I thought I remember hearing Umar saying how uh, 
the ben the, the great benefactor he was a white guy from uh for harriet tubman was from wilmington delaware okay now i could be wrong because I, 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 I vaguely remember him saying that so i could be wrong uh, he's working the chitlin circuit doing lectures in a vegan spot. Next appearance will be at Uncle Bubba's Hot Wings. <laughs> Get wings in liberation for 4 99 Won't you come on down? It, it is true, Lewis said, because there was a time when Umar was selling out venues and it was like on college campuses and people were coming out. Really nice looking spots. But now he's back on the chitlin circuit. He, he actually has been on the chitlin circuit for, for quite a number of years. I remember one time, I kid you not, I only had a receipt to pull up, but I, I, I remember this vividly. Okay, this is the difference. Sometimes it's not, this is vividly. I remember he was talking about how <laughs> he was going to be talking in a parking lot. Uh, I think he said of a Walmart or some shit. I said, what? And, 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 and there was video of this. And so he was, <laughs> he was talking. And they had erected a, um, they erected like a, a tent. And if you look down, it's like uh, gravel. <laughs> I said, man, this guy. He's basically speaking in the park, uh, speaking on top of the parking lot. He, he done fell off so bad. And he's addressing suits and ties and professionals come out to see him and, and, People with, you know, uh, masters and PhDs would come out to see him. And now he he done up here at, at Uncle. He's going to be at Uncle, Uncle Bubba's Hot Wings Chicken Shack on Monday, family. Why don't you come on down? <laughs> for four out of nine, family. Two for, if you, if, if you come in, you if you bring two, it's two for nine and nine. All right. It's true, though. Thanks, Louis Luck. Anybody remember that? He, he said, he was like, yeah, this is going to be in the parking lot. What was it? I, I think it was either uh, Walmart or the other spot. I can't remember what it was. It was something. We would laugh so hard. Uh, them jeans going. <laughs> them jeans, they done been through a, through a journey over the many years. Going all the way back to the St. Paul school camp. By the way, H&L, when Umar saying all these different schools that he went to, what he's really talking about is all of the different school scams that he runs. Because it is a scam when you you going and you're going to be speaking, let's say in Chicago, and you purposefully go to an abandoned building in Chicago and act as if you're looking at that particular abandoned building as a school site. So that when you're in Chicago, when you lecture, you can tell people, hey, I'm looking for a school in Chicago. He wasn't looking for no school in Chicago. That's a scam. That's called fraud. Then he would go he would go over to, I don't know, pick a city. Uh, somewhere in Florida. And he go out there, yeah, you know, I'm looking for, and he'll film himself looking at some uh, uh, abandoned building and say that it's a school. Sometimes it would be a school. One time, I remember it was a, it looked like a daycare center. And this guy's walking through there. He don't even say nothing. He's just walking, because he's just creeping around like he's trespassing. One of the weirdest videos, he don't even say nothing. But he would do that. He, but that's another school scam because whatever city he's in, that just it's fraud because he's acting as if he's doing one thing when he's really not. He's just doing that to get people to be interested in coming to hear him speak. And then he asks for money because he's opening up a school potentially in your city. So people are going to be more willing to donate. I'm sorry. I've gone off. I, I apologize. Thank you for super that. And also thanks for all little stuff. For super super that. Dara says, where is the front office? Umar doesn't have an office. But if you go up there to Wilmington where he has these abandoned buildings that he calls schools, he's only focusing on one side of the street. But the main office is actually on the other side of the street. That's the big building. OK, that's with the big auditorium, the big building. They're connected to each other. Most of the classroom space is over there, too. But he's completely abandoned all that, Darius. He don't even go over there. We talked about that earlier. He doesn't show it. He hasn't shown it in about four years, over four years now. What's the condition on that side of the street? Uh, you know, what renovations have taken place over there? Anytime he says renovations, he's talking about stuff that's being done, allegedly, on the other side of the street. But that's not where the main office is at. The main office is actually inside of the larger building. Because I remember he showed it initially. That's what he showed mainly when he first got started. He would show that. And in his promo video, that's what he showed. And you can tell the layout over there is such that that's, that's where when children would report or if a parent would come up there, they would go into the, onto that side of the street. But he's not even focused. He's completely abandoned that. Such a waste of money and resources. Because if he spent $400,000 and most of the value is on that side of the street, where the front office would be, 
Well, then that would mean that over two hundred thousand dollars of value is on that side street that he hasn't done anything. But why spend four hundred thousand dollars when you're only focusing on, let's say, about one hundred and twenty thousand dollars worth of the value that you actually purchased? That's a waste of money. He don't care, though, because that ain't his money anyway. Why not? Why not purchase something smaller or just rent something out with with the, you know, over a million dollars that he had at that time and just start something small? Well, because the intent was not to open up a school. The intent was to keep this going indefinitely so you can keep getting money out of people. It's really that simple. And not only is there, that's where the front office is. When you guys ask it, whether or not Umar has an actual office, he doesn't have an office. He actually used to say, yeah, well, I'm setting up my office. It was years ago. And I'm going to be having my office. I need you queens. To, it's going to be a sexy office. That's his words. Help me with the decoration. I need y'all to donate so I can get this get this office. Never, no, no office in sight. We're almost five years into this and he doesn't even have an office up there. Anyone who thinks that, that somehow he's serious about this, you, you, it's just delusion at this point. Thanks, Darius King, uh, for the Super Chat. Also, thanks, HNL and Lewis Luck. I appreciate it. All right, let's get back to it. Here we go. Brothers and sisters, but I would rather have a school in Baltimore, too. So if you see something, not any school. I can find schools my damn self. I'm looking for something that is inexpensive, less than $500,000. If you come across a school in the city of this is a recent video. What are you talking about? You're looking for another school less than 500,000. Well, that means you're sitting on some money, right? If you're sitting on all this money, why aren't you renovating up there at the trap up there in Wilmington? Boy, I tell you, this guy, he's something else. He's such a fraudster. Baltimore, that's less than $500,000. You need to take a picture of it and you need to find the realtor information and you need to text to me. Dr. Umar, you said a half million under. Listen, this is no different than what he was saying from 2014 to 2019. He did this for five years, the same talk. Pickle School, that's $425,000. I don't know what the condition is, Doc, but you asked for it, I delivered. That's all I need you to do. But guess huh? what? I really get any help from black folks in America. So now it's y'all's fault. That's what it is. Boy, this guy, he's a trip. He's a, he begs for everything, and then he demeans y'all. Boy. I really get any help from black folks in America. Y'all come to Come across the school in the city of Baltimore that's less than $500,000. You need to take a picture of it and you need to find the realtor information and you need to text to me. Dr. Umar, you said a half mil and under. Hit close school that's $425,000. Umar, you got $425,000? Is that what you're saying here? Well, if that's the case, Umar, you, you purchased properties for $400,000. If I do the math on, on everything that you've paid for, that you stated that you paid for, and some we can verify with receipts, online receipts, because he doesn't provide any, but I can find them online. It should be close to a million, which makes sense because in 2017, you uh, you said you had a million. If you had a million then, that means that you should have had about 500,000 left over after you purchased these trap bandos. And if, if you're talking as if you have, you sitting on 425,000, well now, you're probably close to $1.5 million that you raised, at least. But guess what? It's close to 2.5 at this point. Because this goes all the way back to two, at least 2009. He's running so much game. I don't know what the condition is, Doc, but you asked for it, I delivered. That's all I need you to do. But guess what? I rarely get any help from black folks in America. Y'all come to the lectures and all that, but guess what? Y'all watch all the damn YouTubes. I'm the damn king of YouTube. But... <laughs> He, he demeans the, his very the same people who support him. He's been doing this for such a long time. And I told people a long time ago that ultimately he's going to blame black people for his failures. And that's exactly what he has done. And he continues to do. He will blame black people. I remember one time he said that the reason why the school wasn't uh, uh, open yet was because of all of the, the black contractors, or whatever that he was working with. They were all scammers. He said that he had to go to white people in order to get all the renovations done. He said they did it in three days or whatever he said, three in three days. What it took these other black people, it took them six months to get done. Remember something like that. I'm paraphrasing. But I told people a long time ago that ultimately his end game, when, when all of this stuff really starts to hit the fan, he's just going to blame black people. And that's precisely what he has done. He continues to do. But when I say just help me look for some schools, I don't get no help. I can count on. Yeah, Jonathan, this this video is very recent. Um, let, let me find out for sure. Hold on one second. I, I should have told you all the date. I apologize. I like to do that just so we can have our timeline set. Uh, we got about 930 people in the building. Um, where, where did I get this video? I think it was off of. Um, 
six million views. I think this is where it's at. It may it may, it may be on another one. But let me go ahead and take a look real quick. I should have had that for y'all already. Uh, yeah, it's not coming on up here. Oh, here it is right here. This is from, it posted two days ago. Okay, that's when it posted. But I, So I would think that within the last week, uh, let me go look on his Instagram, see if he posted it there. You got another great uh, grave. Well, he must have been at a grave site recently because he has it up there. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. So I'm going to assume it's like within within the last week. Uh, it's, a, it's a fairly recent video. Um, here we go. Actually sent me schoolies when we were school shopping. Y'all want me to do everything. Raise the consciousness, help the parents, save the kids, build a school, fight the snow bomb. I can count on two hands how many black people in this country actually sent me schoolies when we were school shopping. Y'all want me to do everything. What? Actually sent me what? What did he say? School. Some schools, I don't get no help. I can count on two hands how many black people in this country actually sent me schoolies when we were school shopping. Y'all want me to do everything. He said only two people sent him school leads when we were school shopping. Come on now, Umar, stop it. So ridiculous. So the thing is, what's the point though anyway? You can't even get one school going. So what, what difference does it make? You can't even get these trap vandals up there in Wilmington going. It's been almost five years. That's almost a half a decade. Come on. So ridiculous. What's up, Dr. J. Kelly? Well, how's it going, man? He says he had a big fight with Lord Jamar saying he wasn't starting out small, but now he's only uh, working on one side starting out small. Yeah. He sure did. He sure did. He was going crazy in that Lord Jamar video. He was. He was talking all that mess, you know, and then he did. He said, I'm not starting small, blah, 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 blah. But I have I can't remember what video it was, but more recently we did a video where he was said, you know, what? I, I got to start. We go, we're starting small. That's why we got to start on this side of the street. We're starting small. He don't know what he's doing. And see, the, the smaller school and you've been up there, the smaller school in, in the smaller gym that pales in comparison to the other side of the street but if we want to put it in the greater context here it pales th those buildings up there pale in comparison to what he promised in the first place this is where the fraud part really good kicks in and a lot of people forget about saint paul's it was a college campus and that he was going to have dorm rooms and the, the children were going to live on campus student center gym uh facilities that even there were buildings down there where uh he could stay in i mean it, it was you know it, it, it was a, a fairly large for what they were asking for it was fairly large and it could accommodate a, a whole lot but see what happened with umar was that he wanted a certain amount of money to put in the bid he didn't get the money that he wanted in the amount of time at least that's what he said uh so what he said was we're going to keep we're going to keep donating or keep donating so we can find another spot and then this goes on from 2000 14 all the way until 2019 it takes him five years to settle on these abandoned buildings in wilmington delaware and, and then then five years later as it stands today close to five years later still no school no open school and it's not even what he promised once he purchased these abandoned buildings which was to open up both sides of the street now he's down to what I remember one time he got all the way down to we just trying to get the gym fixed because, you know, that's what we're going to do. We can have an event space. He got all the way down to that. But you're absolutely right about this. He's starting off small. But really, you know, he 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 promoted as something big to start so he can get the most amount of money out of people. But ultimately, it, it came down to some rinky dink uh, trap banners up there in Wilmington. But he had already collected the money. He's still collecting money for this foolishness. And you know this. You live out there. So you know what the deal is. Such a shame. All together, 13 years this has been going on. It's been four years and nine months since he acquired these abandoned buildings and there's still no school. And now he's just trying to get the small buildings up and running. It's ridiculous. Now, thanks, Dr. J. Kelly. I hope everything's going well with you, bro. Good to see you. And a lady says, uh, what is the secession plan? If he becomes ill or goes to meet the ancestors, where is that money going and who is responsible? He's not thinking about that. There is no secession plan because it's only him. That's another interesting aspect of this. If he's basically a one man show. How are you going to start an institution 
like this, even if it's just one school, one small rinky dink school in a, in a small gym, how are you by yourself going to make that happen? It, it just doesn't work that way. And see, Umar, he's burned so many bridges. He, there's so many people that tried to help him. That tried to, Lord Jamar was trying to help him. Uh, there's so many people who tried to help him. There's people who still have tried to, still continue to try to help him, but he doesn't want help. He wants money and he wants cookies. That's it. If he can get the cookies, he'll get the cookies before he get the money. Hmm. All kind of people try to help this guy. But see, he he's burned so many bridges. There is no plan in place that if something happens, if he gets sick for, you know, uh, I, I don't even want to say it that way. But if something happens with with, with Umar, uh, he doesn't have a backup plan to where this quote unquote project continues. He doesn't care for it to continue because he's not going to need money if he's in. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me stop. Because I, I don't want to wish harm on anybody. I don't want to put anything out there like that. But y'all get my point. OK. He's not planning for anything like that. He, he, his plan is to get money now, get money now, get money now. I don't care. He doesn't care about opening up a school or establishing some sort of a legacy where schools are open, you know, perpetually. See, Lord Jamar's father-in-law was able to do that. And I'm sure he has a plan that if something happens to him or if, if he, you know, he gets too old, he has people that because he has a, a community of people working with him. What community does Umar have? Real quick. I don't know. A lady, I don't know if you were around way back in the day. But with Umar, if many of y'all remember, quick crush chat. Some of y'all don't remember because a lot of y'all wasn't around uh, way back in the day. But Umar actually had people around him. They weren't necessarily the type of people that would, you know, if something happened, they would be able to pick up the torch and keep this thing going. But he had people rallied around him and they would be up there at them trap banners, walking around in them abandoned buildings. Hit the one of y'all, any of y'all remember that? My question to you all is where are all those people today? See, if he can't even keep those people around, how y'all think that he's going to have some sort of a plan so that if something happens, this project can continue to, to perpetuate itself in his absence? It's not it's not possible because you have to build relationships with people and trust. He has issues with building relationships and he has trust issues. That's why he's a megalomaniac. He, he's a control freak. He has to be in control of everything. See? That's another. He doesn't even have a board of directors. That's another reason why people who think that somehow this is going to happen, he, he doesn't even have a board of directors. Directors, he don't even have a website yet for these trap bandos. Come on now, so ridiculous. I got an IT related degree, cybersecurity. He doesn't even have a website yet. Thirteen years into this, he doesn't even have a website. There's no FMG website owned by Umar. We opening up a school, but you ain't got no website yet. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for going off. Thanks, a lady, for super chat. What kind of man? That's what I'm saying. Hey, thanks for being a member. I did upload a video for you members to deal with the Umar Johnson Chicago fiasco. I actually think, and I don't, I don't say it 100%, I explained that in the video. I actually think that all of that Chicago stuff that he's talking about, I think he he's he's just, he's clout chasing, that he wasn't on the bill as a keynote speaker or a speaker at all. I have yet to see one flyer promoting that. Uh, and I even looked on his Instagram page. Normally he posted. Maybe I missed it. I may, I may have missed it, but I didn't, because I don't be following this guy like I used to. But but there should be some official organization who put that event together that has an official flyer where they promote Umar. I haven't seen it. OK, now, again, I could be wrong and I'll stand corrected. If someone produces that, don't go make it up now and then bring it to me. OK, I never saw Umar post any of that. I, I think that it's a big old fiasco. I think he just went out there clout chasing and the event wasn't even taking place. But he wants to promote it as if it was. And after he's a keynote speaker. And then it was canceled. Who knows? They may have even not let him in. That probably would happen. So you know what? We ain't letting you in anyway. Who are you? Anyway, uh, thanks, uh, Scott Evans. And thanks, a lady, too, for the super chat. I appreciate it. OK, let's get back to it. We're doing good on time. It's only, we're only an hour and 53 only <laughs> compared to other live streams. We're doing good on time. Here we go. Raise the consciousness, help the parents, save the kids, build a school, fight the snow bunny. He ain't doing none of this. He ain't built no school. He ain't helping no children just running his mouth. Y'all want me to do it all by my hands. <laughs> and then when I don't do it fast enough, y'all get mad at me. Where did school at? Somebody said it's been 30 years. I didn't know I started going to school in high school. Here we go with the, all the yelling. No, no, ain't nobody said, listen, we stick with the facts up over here, Umar. We ain't, ain't nobody said it take you 30 years. It's actually taking, you still don't have no school, first of all, big papa, big boy, okay? Big papa. You still ain't got no school. Okay, let's be clear about that. I don't mean to call you a boy. You remember Bob's big boy? That's why you remind me of, of, of Bob's big boy for some reason. I don't know. Some of y'all don't know about that, you younger people. Uh, 
Umar, it's very clear that it's been at least 13 years. Ain't nobody saying 30. Okay, I'll stick with the facts. I'm not going to be lying on nobody. 13 years is plenty of time to open up a school, especially when you said it was going to open in 2013. So it's le- it's 10 years late. Now, allegedly, you're saying that it's going to open in, two- in 2025. I haven't heard it yet, but we're going to see it in this video in just a month. Give me a month, people. Four more likes to 500. They all let me know when we get to 500 so I can put this last light on. I never feel complete in my life until I get that third light. Yeah, y'all remember Sharon? Well, Sharon was around and uh yeah yeah umar scared of, uh, of tiff tiff the griff I, I like tiff though tiff was around also uh Sh- sharon and uh uh what was that guy's name that worked at the boys and girls club i can't say right now he ain't around anymore um there was someone else i was thinking about oh Ann, remember Ann? uh Ann was was up up on up over there all the time and he shared him around she was mean Ann was mean she was just mean <laughs> 500. All right. Thank y'all. Hey, Tata, how you doing? Let me get some shout outs. You guys, little princess in the building. Tata in the building as well. Temporaries in the building as well. Yeah, he don't have no business plan. Okay. And, and even, even if you try to put one together, it's not fiscally viable anyway. I've already covered that. There, there's no way that the operating budget for, for uh, the, uh, I was going to say the Jay Morrison Academy. We'll just call it that. Okay. Their, their operating budget was over $6 million. And that's for both sides of the streets. That's going back over a decade ago. OK, now what would, with inflation, how much would it be? And, and we would just say for for half of, of, of the side street. Well, it's going to be at least three million, it's probably close to four million dollars just for half of the street operating costs. Umar hasn't he he's, he will say, I haven't, I haven't raised four million dollars in, in all this time. Well, if you can't raise it in all that time, how are you going to raise that each year? Because you can actually operate the again. He says three phases, acquisition, uh, restoration or renovation and then operation. Well, operation is going to cost at least four million dollars, probably about five million dollars a year. Just on half, one half of the street. Where are you going to come up with the money for that? Tuition, $5 million in a, in a drug infested, crime infested, very high, a low income family, uh, families up over there. Who more can't put, how are you going to be, there's no way to put a business plan because it's not a business. <laughs> it's, a, it's a charity. And that charity is, is going to be, it's going to be dependent on people's donations because they ain't going to get enough uh, children up in, over there. And how, how many children are you going to have to have? Someone do the math. Okay. I ain't going to do it. We did it before. Uh, but but if someone wants to do the math, if you charge 500 people, 500, uh, if you cho- if you pay, if children have to pay $500, if, if the parents have to pay $500 to have one child enrolled, how many children are going to need to be enrolled for an operating budget of, let's say, $4 million? Okay, they would be in school, let's say, roughly nine months. We can even get, we can even say 10 months. Someone want to do the math? How many children, if let's say their parents paid uh, $500 10 months out of the year, how many children would have to be enrolled per year in order to cover $5 million in expenses, operating costs, okay? If anybody wants to do the magic, well, I can do it, but I, I don't feel like it. I'm lazy. You know, I'm, I'm just lazy. <laughs> you know me. I'm just what kind of man? All right. Let's get back to it. And thanks for all Super Chat there, everybody. Oh, let me go put this this uh, light up over here. The reason here. it took us so long to get the school ready because the black contracts kept scamming us. So last See, I year, I just made a decision. I said, listen, I'm going to go with white folks. I'm tired of this nigga shit. It ain't working. I called the white folks up, and here we is, almost done in one year. The white people did in one year, but the blacks couldn't do it for me. Same money. I'm paying them what they want. This ain't free. Same thing. See that? I just told y'all that because he said the same thing, but he changed the, the uh, he said months before. Um, he, he, he said the same thing before. He just changed it. Now that the, the timeline is different. This goes to show that he's lying. But he's saying that they, they scammed him. So he, so someone said that uh, Asia said it's he gonna need about ten thousand students. <laughs> Are you serious? He gonna need about ten thousand stu- students in order to <laughs> pay tuition in order to cover the operating costs per year. Fifty thousand? Oh goodness gracious! Either way, that's what I'm saying. As a business plan, it ain't, ain't gonna work. One thousand is five million, I think. Okay, a thousand. Okay, a thousand. Okay, if it's a thousand. 1,100. Okay, so it's going to be at 1,100. <laughs> He's going to have that. Them poor kids, it's going to be about 400 of them in, in the classroom. I, I don't know. Just, I don't know why they're going to pull that off. These poor kids. It'll be at the, around 1,000 students. That's what he, just to cover tuition. Okay, or, or cover operating costs per year. See, that's, you can't come up with a business plan with that work because he can't even. 
he can't even hold it. Those buildings can't even hold a thousand children. But in, in that area, how many people are even living in, in, in that school district? But the point is that uh, a, a thousand uh, children in an impoverished neighborhood going to pay their parents going to pay five hundred dollars a month. Come on, it's ridiculous. I mean, thousand kids to pay five thousand a month. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> all right let's get back to it let me go back and hear what he was saying because i was getting the and the and thank y'all so much for the life once dr umar get to school i'm gonna come do the electric for free i'm gonna go do the plumbing for free i'm gonna come they ain't doing damn thing for free ain't nobody showed up yet with no free service at fmg stop the lie that be all over the youtube yes yeah, i'm sorry for eating uh umar people did come up there and do stuff for free then people that was out there painting, they actually paid in order for them to come up and paint. You know, that wasn't for free? No, that was for free. I can pull the receipt right now. I have them old ladies out there painting in the cold. Let's go. So good. And Lord Jamar, Lord Jamar ain't gonna do shit. <laughs> and he's still mad at Lord Jamar. I wonder what else he said. They added the other part out. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Listen, somebody sent me a link the other day. Baltimore got some uh, abandoned and derelict. Hold on one second. So good. And Lord Jamar, Lord Jamar ain't gonna do shit like people did in one year, but the blacks couldn't do it for me. Folks, I'm tired of this nigga shit, it ain't working. I called the white this folks. What? Folks, I'm tired of this nigga shit, it ain't working. Folks, I'm tired Woo! of this nigga shit. Did y'all hear what he said? I ain't gonna repeat it. In one chat room, did y'all hear what he said? I'm tired of this what? Man, this guy. He demeans black people so much, it's a shame. And then y'all, some of y'all be like, you know what? He, you know, he's our leader. Mm-hmm. That's what he said. I'm sorry for, for eating while I'm talking. I apologize. I'm hungry though. Let me just say, I'll play it one more time. We're gonna move on. We're almost done too before tonight. Okay, hold on, everybody. Ready because the black contract just kept scamming us. So last year, I just made a decision. I said, listen, I'm going to go with white folks. I'm tired of this nigga shit. It ain't working. I called wow. the white folks up, and here we is, almost done in one year. The white people did in one year, but the blacks couldn't do it for me. Same money. I'm paying them what they want. This ain't free. Same it only makes sense because it's, it's been almost five years. This timeline is all off. And all them Negroes who was running around talking about, once Dr. Umar get to school, I'm going to come do the electric for free. I'm going to go do the plumbing for free. I'm gonna come. They ain't doing damn thing for free. Ain't nobody showed up yet with no free service at FMG. He all they do is complain. You know, you women out there don't be dealing with these types of men. That all they do is find reason to complain about stuff. It's 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 unbecoming. Stop the lie. That be all over the YouTube. Yes. Yeah, Stop the lie, babe. So good. And Lord Jamar, Lord Jamar ain't gonna do shit. Dang, he's still mad at Lord Jamar. That Lord Jamar interview was from what two, three years ago, something like that. He's still mad about that. <laughs> Yeah, they sure did. There's all kinds of people that offer. Oh, Lord. oh Lord. Listen, somebody oh, yeah. sent me a link the other day. Baltimore got some uh, abandoned and derelict property thing they running where you can get, what is it, five? Yeah, like them abandoned derelict buildings up there. One with dollars and you get a house. What y'all got going on right now? Somebody just sent it. Y'all need to look it up. Something in Baltimore, they're selling the abandoned properties for real cheap. I think it's five hundred dollars a building, but you got to prove you got the money to fix it up or something like that. Please look into it because y'all gonna be the next big city to get gentrified. Yes. Y'all already got it, but it's not as intense as it is in Philly. We done in Philly. Philly is over. DC is over. Chocolate City, no white chocolate city is over. They coming to y'all next. Baltimore is the next hit, so I need y'all to buy as much as y'all can buy. We already behind the eight ball. Oh, wow. All y'all black women, y'all need to come together, put y'all money together. Everybody put in a couple G's. Let's get two or three of these properties. Black men. What? What? Why wouldn't you say black men and women put your money together? First of all, why are you saying people to put the, where's your money at? You ain't got no job, Tommy. Let's start there. Where's your money to put in the pot, Umar? But you see, it even shows where his mentality is. He doesn't see any cohesion between black men and black women because he doesn't live a life where he has cohesion with black women. He'll try to get them draws, though, and run through you. That's what he'll do. That's what he's been doing. I've been telling people, warning y'all for a long time.
But why wouldn't he say black men and black women put your money together? No, he doesn't do that. He, he starts off with the black women. Let's see what he said with the black men. Let's come together, start an LLC with everybody's name on it, put a couple G's together, buy some of these properties before the white folks push y'all out because. Boy, this guy, he a trip. Let's. Umar, you ain't got no money. Talking about. It's coming. And your black politicians ain't going to tell you because they're not going to do nothing about it. So they can't let you know that you got a war on your hands that they ain't going to do nothing about. Right. And the reason they're not going to do nothing about it because they are Democrats and they do whatever the hell the Democratic plantation uh, slave masters tell them to do. Yeah. That's why I don't vote for black people who are Republicans and Democrats. If you're not independent, I'm not voting for you. We just elected a new mayor in Philadelphia. Congratulations to the system. What's she going to change for black people? Nothing. She's a Democrat. They're going to tell her what to do. This guy. She going to do it. And you know what her job will be for the next year? Getting Joe Biden reelected. That's that's that. Effective immediately. All Negro elected officials of the Democratic Party for the next 365 days, your job is to do what? Get the black vote out for Joe Biden. They're not going to be thinking about nothing else. Look at this, you know what's funny? With the add on. She ain't even looking at him. She's like, boy, you don't shut your mouth. See her right here? And she ain't even looking vote at him. Vote out for Joe Biden. <laughs> They're not going to be thinking about nothing else. And then you know what's funny? Whenever Democrats get elected, we celebrate like we want something. Y'all um, notice that? When Joe Biden won, y'all would celebrate like y'all want something. Like when Barack Obama got elected, y'all would celebrate like y'all want something. Y'all ain't getting off of Barack Obama. Nothing at all. Why are you Brothers yelling? Brothers and sisters. They, they, are, they are not feeling this, this rant. They're they really not. These people are sitting there like, what are you talking about? Dang. What's up, Robbie? Robbie says uh, he said no one showed up to FMG with free services. Yeah, Umar, because you blocked them and ignored calls when people offered to help. Yeah, Umar did word magic the way he. he yeah, you're true. Yeah, that's true. That's good. You, that's good. You caught that. But but you're right about that. See, people ain't gonna show up if you uh, if you don't respond to them or you respond to them initially. But then when they try to set a date, then you don't respond at all. That's that's happened. And I've already covered that. The guy sent me receipts on all that. I showed. I don't even know if I showed all of those receipts. I can't even remember. It was so long ago. But he's not the only one. So so, yeah, it's wordplay. He's he's really crafty in that way. That, that's, 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 yeah, that's good that you caught that. But he's really crafty in that way. He's had plenty of support and plenty of people wanting to do work for free for him over the last four and a half, close to five years now. But the truth of the matter is, is that there, there's, there is there's still no school. And he he's not close. He may act like he said we only got two inspections left. That left. That's a blatant lie. That's a blatant lie. There's so much work that needs to be. You, you guys realize that even if there's cracks in the cement on, on the sidewalk, it's not going to pass inspection. So he's not going to open up and be able to open up a school. You can't have that. If there's any way where someone can be walking and they can trip, you know, if there's if even if there's like with the gym and, and that gym, there's all these ridges and stuff because of the foundation issue in there. That's not going to pass inspection. So, no, he's he's it's just not two inspections away. There's a plenty of work that needs to be done. See, that may Robbie, that may be another word play for Umar. He, he could say, yeah, there's two more inspections that's needed. I'll, I'll propose that there's more inspections. But see, the truth is that he needs to pass these inspections. Well, how what type of work needs to be done so that he will actually pass inspection? Well, that's a whole lot of work. At this rate, we're talking four or five years down the line where he can get everything finally fixed up to get to the point where he can pass these two or three inspections. You see my point? But that's the wordplay. You know who else is, is, is uh, crafty like that? Jay Morrison, he does that too. Polite does it too, but Jay Morrison is real crafty. If you guys listen to that video where he does a town hall, we're going to cover it. We're going to cover it. He, he probably going to get mad at me. He said, that's, that's okay. You just be lying. Just be up here lying. And when we do it, if Jay, if, if you want to come up here and defend yourself and talk, you can do it. But just just know that talking in circles ain't going to work for me. I'm, I'm listen. I'm not arrogant, but I'm too intelligent to be falling for that mess. Y'all be running and talking in circles and, and confusing. That's, it just doesn't work with me because I'll go right back to the initial question that you know, danced around. with probably talk with your eyes all blinking and bug eyed and like you be doing. That ain't going to work for me. We go right back. You can run your mouth for four or five minutes talking about everything else except Jesus, but we're going to come back to the question. So when we do that, Jay Morrison, if you want, and not that he's watching, because, he, he, you know, him and him and Umar, they don't even like each other. <laughs> but if he, if he, if if you happen to see this, when we do that, you're welcome. Man. I'll, I'll send you the link, and you can come on up and try to defend yourself off of that scam. 
Boy, the dog on chain took twelve million dollars of black people money, and, and there's there's nothing you ain't done nothing with it to benefit nobody but yourself. The shame is sad. Just like with Umar, he ain't he ain't educated one black boy. Ain't offered no services up there in Wilmington. Ain't done no food drive, no book drive, no book bag drive, no Chromebook drive, no no pasta drive. I don't know throw it, whatever you all want to throw in there. No Thanksgiving chicken. A tender uh, turkey sandwich drive, nothing, nothing. No Christmas gift drive, no Kwanzaa gift drive, nothing. All that money ain't done nothing to help nobody except himself. Mm -hmm. But they're real crafty with how they say things. Very crafty. Thanks, uh, uh, Robbie Lott. Y'all remember Ronnie Lott? That was one of my favorite football players from back in the day. He played for the San Francisco 49ers, and he also played, I believe he played for the Oakland Raiders for a couple of years. I could be wrong about that. All right. Thanks, Robbie. Let's get back to it. Here we go. My cell number. I want to give you my cell number in case you need to reach me for any reason at all. Please take my cell number. By the way, I'm looking for a black roofer. I need a roofer. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> See him getting mad? He don't want the women saying nothing. See, he gets upset, starts yelling. Let's do that again. Look, they look like they got some butter biscuits back there. <laughs> it's some plastic bags. They got butter biscuits in the plastic bag back there, family. By the way, I'm looking for a black roofer. I need a roofer. <laughs> Watch who market, man. He always looking for a black roofer. I thought you said you were dealing with the white people, though. But now you need a black roofer. No, you just trying to figure out a way to get get put your number out there so you can get to get them cookies. That's all it is. And someone kind of called you out and get mad about it. All right. We have 536. Like y'all hit the like button. Come on now. Help, help a brother out tonight because I wasn't planning on doing this. I hope you all enjoying the show. But I said, let me get up on here this month. Uh, Sal says the first step uh, is to pay off the damn property taxes. Why is he still talking, uh, talking, complaining about what black folks ain't doing? What's up? What's up? Yeah. What's up, Sal? Yeah, he hasn't mentioned what we're, and I don't even know, because I haven't looked into this guy in a long time, uh, not consistently, but uh, KKC probably knows where the, what the tax situation is. I can go look it up, but I, ain't, I, don't, I don't even want to deal with it. Um, yeah, if the property taxes aren't even paid off, and I'll, I'm going to assume that they're not, because the last time I looked, I think it was at $116,000. If they're not paid off, what's the point in any of this? Because what's going to end up happening? Is they, you know, the, the city's going to come in and take these properties for unpaid tax and, and sell it on, on the share of sale, and that's it. You know, I, I and I don't, I'm, I don't mean to spec. Well, I'm going to speculate because I don't. I, when I uh, speculate, I always tell people I'm speculating here. Okay. I have a sense that Umar doesn't care about the other side of the street because that's where the problem, the vast majority of the property taxes is, is due, and he knows this, that he doesn't have the money, even though he should have had the money to do it. He has had the money to do it, but he just hasn't handled the business. But I have a sense that he doesn't care because he wants those properties to be that side of the street, that, that property to be taken from him. And then he can use it as an excuse. You know, hey, listen, you know, the, the government or the city of Wilmington, they there is racism, that type of thing. Then he can he can continue to spend this indefinitely. These, these scammers and these fraudsters and these con artists, they, they do stuff like that. Anything where they can figure out a way, they'll, they'll come up with anything to figure out a way to get more money and extend the scam even further. So if, if something ha like that happens, you can say, hey, listen, it's just racism. It's white supremacy. And they, they took these props. No, you didn't pay the taxes. See? And see, if you're serious about opening up a school, the first thing you do is handle that. Right. You, that's the first thing that you handle. But he hasn't done that. And now I'm saying that without actually looking, he may have paid him off by now. I have no idea. But the last time I checked, it was at, at about one hundred sixteen thousand dollars in back taxes. That had been due for a couple of years, going back to 2010. Yeah. Thanks, Sal, for soup chat. And what's up to you, too, Sal? All right. All right, let's get back to it. We're almost done. Here we go. Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> See that? Don't hate the player, hate the game! Didn't I just tell y'all? I just told y'all. I just told. Listen, I need credit. I just told y'all. He be telling on himself. I just told you. The reason why he be giving out his phone number because he wants. To get them draws. It's that simple. Someone kind of called him out on it, and then he tell the truth. He says, Don't hate the play, hate the game. Hit the one. I done told y'all. I've been telling y'all this for so long. 
He's poor. These poor black women fall for this mess. He ain't got. He, listen, he ain't got no job. He been in child support for over twenty years. He stayed with his mama. At least he used to. I think something happened with the mama. With, with him and the mama, I really do. He, he don't got no job. He got the rental car. He ain't got no house. He ain't got nothing. He ain't taking care of his kids. Been on child support for twenty years. He ain't rent his children alive. And yeah, y'all gonna give up the dogs. Now we say what kind of a man, but we can also say what kind of woman. Because why would you do that? There go Marks. He texts me now. See, I told y'all. He texts me as soon as I get up on this topic. He's like, "Oh no, oh no, don't talk about the draws." Yeah, Umar, he, he'll take some draws over a donation. He sure would. See, Umar, no, no, I'm not, no, no, listen, we're telling the truth. You just told on yourself. You said, don't hate the player, hate the game. See, that's what you said. Up, up there looking like you, you be baking butter biscuits. <laughs> he do. He look like a chef baking bacon that be baking in butter, in butter biscuits on Mondays. <laughs> <laughs> Umar need to open up his own butter biscuit factory. That's what he needs to do. Stop playing. Just open up the butter biscuit factory. It's, 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 send them online overnight. I'll buy some. I like butter biscuit. <laughs> only, only reason why people be talking bad about butter biscuits because the Tariq she gave butter biscuits a bad name. Ain't nothing wrong with no butter biscuits. I'm trying to tell y'all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just. I'm a. I'm tripping tonight. I really am. I'm on the phone eating strawberries. Okay. I'm sorry. Let's get back to it. Sometimes I need a break. Thank y'all so much, Cookie Crush Chat. I'm serious. People get all all. See, who's on the scam about two point five million dollars? And he wants that. He tried. He don't talk bad about butter biscuits. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with butter biscuits, Umar. You look like you be baking them on Mondays. Okay? All right. <laughs> let, me get, let me get off the phone. <laughs> Butter biscuits before business, family. We must stay focused. <laughs> right? Tonight's show is a mess. It's, a, it's official. Tonight's show is a mess. All right. <laughs> Let's get back to it. I'm tripping bad. He just did the Cinnabons. Who wanted to give Cinnabons a bad name? <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with Cinnabons, family. A lot of us, we grew up on Cinnabons. That's how we made it through the, the hard times. <laughs> if we didn't have no food to eat, we had Cinnabons. Hit the one. We had to take that Cinnabon and break off pieces for each one of our siblings. <laughs> Mama got a little slice. Daddy got a little slice. And we got a little corn off that center bun. But Uma up here talking about them center buns is stale. Don't give center buns. <laughs> the butter biscuits that got a bad name and the center buns that got, that got a bad name is wrong. And Uma up here look like he be baking center buns on Tuesday. All right, let's get to it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> This 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 uh, this show is officially off the chain, okay? It happens from time to time. You guys know this. That's why we're here. We have a good time, all right? Will you please pass the gray coupon, Umar? Umar, Jermaine. <laughs> G-string Jermaine. Will you please pass the gray coupon? <laughs> That's a joke from last week. All right. All right, let's get back to it. We almost done. I want to do some more videos tonight, but we're just gonna do this one. It's like a how long is this video anyway? I don't know. <laughs> We've been talking about it for a whole month. Here we go. Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> <laughs> Don't hate the player, hate the game. I'm too sure to see that. Listen, we're going to have some fun at FDMG, though. I'm telling you, we're going to have fun. We're going to have some fun. This is sad. I need a black roofer. Please take my number. Okay. Anybody know a black roofer? We need a roofer. Please tell him to text me. I need him to come up to the school so I can show him this leak. He's going to tell me what's
a leak. What do you talk? I thought you said the renovations are done, Theo. I don't know why I call you <laughs> Cleophis, whatever. Umar still texting me. See, still text. Stop, man. I'm not. I'm not responding to you. Okay, you got clowns. You got caught up. You talking all this. We know what it is. This is sitting buns and the butter biscuit. That's what you want. Uh, whole Southern Cook says at this point, just sell the buildings and get a, a, a cafe, a safe location. He need to get a cafe, a black vegan sports bar. At this point, just uh, sell the buildings and get a safe location because the only ed- eligible staff in the area is the dog who boots <laughs> it. I know, I know that the area is is literally it is crime infested and drug infested. It it is. And uh, Dr. J. Kelly, he can he lives out there. He can tell you. Also, um, Reverend Jerry Juice went up there. He knows he knows how the area. And I could tell. I ain't never been up there, but I could tell just from the beginning. 2019. I was like, nah. Uh-uh. I never grew up in that those types of conditions, but I have enough sense as a black man to know what the deal is. I got street smart. So I was like, nah. See. But but see, we can even ask the question: why would Umar purchase these event these buildings in that area? Because he, he doesn't intend on opening up a school. In fact, Cole Southern Cooks, I don't know if you know this, because you may not have been around back then, but I even pulled up uh receipts to show that the year prior to Umar purchasing those abandoned buildings in 2019. Wilmington, Delaware was ranked six for violent crime in the nation. Why would you buy a school in the middle of that type of an environment? Or it's not even a school. Why would you buy some abandoned buildings that you're going to plan on opening up a school? And then you're going to have people coming from different states there. See, the, the irony is that the, the people who are in these different states, their hood or their neighborhood is likely better than this neighborhood up there in Wilmington. Maybe not all of the people, but the vast majority, because it used to be, it was ranked sixth in the nation for violent crime. I think they called it something like Murder City USA or something crazy. Like that's what, the, that's what they called it. So we can even ask the question, why would he uh, purchase these buildings in, in such a, a horrible location where or purchase these buildings where it, the crime rate is extremely high? And it is to this day. But at least the year prior, I know for a fact it was ranked sixth in the nation for violent crime. Okay. Now, also the cooks, he could he could uh, pull off a move like that. And some people would question him on that. But other people would go along with the Ovido. He can just say, you know, what, it's not working. I'm just going to go and get another building someplace else. OK, so now we he's wasted what? An, of uh, five years on a school scam that goes back to 2009, 2010, and then he can prolong it even indefinitely because now he got to find another one. So make sure you donate. We're looking for another one. And he's never going to say that, that it's a safe area. He'll make up some other excuse like that, that it's white supremacy or, you know, they're trying to take the property away because of tax, back tax or something. He'll blame it on white people or he'll blame it on black. He'll blame it on somebody. But I can see him doing something like that. He'll play the blame game and then he picks a blame game. Uh, blame game he picks up and then he just starts it all over again and then now he takes another two or three years collecting money to find another another location and then that place needs renovations then he takes another five years to do that it just goes on indefinitely that's what you call a long con okay yeah a lot of people don't realize just how bad it is in that neighborhood it's so clear In, in fact i think that the condition of those buildings the exterior condition actually reflects the neighborhood itself and if, if you go on Google Maps and you just start going around and you'll see there's a liquor store right on the corner right there attached. Uh, there's a, a an old church ne- attached to the to that, uh, that the building, the FDMG building on one side. There's a uh, it's an abandoned church. And right next to that is a liquor store. Uh, thanks for the Super Chat host. And thanks for calling in to and sharing your story. I'm sure that there's other people who have stories, but it's, it's, it can be hard because people criticize people and. You know, I, I, I really I, I wish we people didn't do that because there's plenty of people who could share and shed insight on, into how Umar operates. But I already know that I already told people that long time ago, the video that we're watching now, it, it plays into exactly what I've been talking about and exactly what whole Southern Cooks is talking about. Don't hate the player, hate the game. See? And I don't know if, if, everybody, if you don't. If you, well, we'll leave it at that because not everybody may not know what that means, but I know what that means. A black Lilith says, uh, church's chicken uh, have, yeah, they, yeah, that church's chicken got good butter biscuits. <laughs> I know Popeye used to have good butter biscuits. They, had to, they put the honey on them. I used to eat those when I was in college. All right. Thanks, Black Lilith. Um, and then uh, uh, Fiery Water Romo's then everyone. Lying so much to renew the scam uh, believability. Yeah. Yeah, he does that. He, he will continue to lie. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's going on so long, because he continues to lie. 
even him asking for a black roofer. He's already asked for black. Roofer. I can pull the video where he had people up there. Now, real quick, I, 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 let me let me do the other super chats real quick because I, I want to get back to this point. Uh, thanks, uh, Firewater. And then um, Glassboro, uh, Glassboro says, do you have the clip where Umar found a... Well, it, was, it wasn't a crack rock. It was a rock. But his... I have the video. Um, his res, How he responded to seeing that was very telling. Okay. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to do it here, but I'll write it down. Okay, Maybe in the next live stream, I'll pull it up. Um, and it was on the, ste on the steps. Yeah, we'll, we'll do it. Uh, I'll, I'll have that for the next live stream. I don't know when the next time I'm going to be live stream, but I'll have it for the next live stream. Uh, but I do have that, that clip. It was a promo video that he was doing. And, and I'll leave it at that. We'll, we'll come back to it at another time because I want to get done with this live stream. Uh, we're already at two hours and 25 minutes. Thanks, guys, for the super chat. And I, I promise I've got a commitment. I've got it written down. I will get to that in the next live stream. Okay, so I want to finish this one up. Um, okay, did I get to everyone? I got to all the super chats. Okay, thank you so much. Um, real quick, uh, uh, LeBaron says, why are you downing this black man? LeBaron, you're simply, re you're simply reciting what Umar has said over and over again about his critics. No one's down in Umar. Umar's down. You see the difference? No one's down in Umar. Umar is down and he's down bad. Okay, you're just repeating what he says. Okay, so what I'm what I'm getting at here is part of uh, critical thinking is to have your own thought. Don't just repeat. And I have a whole list. And on that list of, of the main, uh, you know, uh, responses that I get from Umar John's followers, that's on the list. It's, it's in the top five. I can pull that up right now and show it. So you're not saying anything that I haven't heard anyone else say, but that's what Umar says to protect himself. Umar's down bad. And guess what? The irony is that Umar criticizes black people all the time. He does it in this video. Hmm? He says that these are these these uh the black people who are working on the building that that they were scammers. No, he's a scam. He's gone after Deion Sanders. He's gone after Kobe Bryant. He's gone after, uh, do I need to pull up the list? Could crush that. I can do it. I, I, I won't put it on the screen. I'll, I'll just read it to you, okay? Just to be clear. See, the irony uh, is that Umar, he's always talking about, well, you know, and he did this recently. It's about black people tearing down another black man. That's exactly, see, listen, I have the top 10 excuses. Number one, you didn't donate. Number two, what are, what are you doing for the black community? Three, where's your school? Number four, name calling. Number five, diversionary excuses. Uh, number six, you're just trying to tear another black man down. How did I have this on, what you're saying on this list, but I put this list together years ago, probably about four years ago. See, this is this is a pre-programmed response. What I'm saying that as a man, you're going to have to come with something different than that, because I've heard that too much. And the truth of the matter is from you, Mark John's father, I've heard it too much. The truth of the matter is that no one tears black men down more than Umar Johnson. So for me to criticize Umar is not tearing him down. It's just speaking the truth. But Umar and I can give you a list of all the all the black people. And this is this is even a comprehensive list of all of the black men that Umar Johnson has gone after. Over the years, let me let me here. Let me see if I have it in this presentation right here. Here, I'm, I'm gonna put put up. I'll just read it to you. See, I have receipts. See, you can say the same thing that that Becky and Sue Ann said last month, but it ain't gonna make me no difference because I already heard it. I actually have it. I have a pre I have it pre written right here. I know what you're gonna say because you just simply repeated what Umar just said. Be your own man. You're gonna have to think about. Okay, wait a minute. Is what this guy's saying true? See, I can back up everything that I say with evidence and proof, but I know one thing, Umar doesn't have a school. I know one thing, he's been out here trying to crush these cookies and taking advantage of these black women. That's not tearing a, a black man down, that's telling the truth. And see, the truth of the matter is that more black men should have had enough uh, 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 balls, don't get mad, to be able to stand up and say, this is wrong. So if we say that it's wrong, we show people and we provide evidence and proof, that tearing someone down? Now, Umar's already down, he's already torn down, living in his mama closet. What you talking about? Come up off this foolishness today. You can't tell me nothing. I know Umar more than you know Umar. And that's a statement of fact. Y'all say the same thing. There's nothing intelligent about it. There's nothing intellectual about it. You're just repeating what, what Umar said to cover himself. That's all. I'm not impressed, sir. Successful black men that Umar Johnson has attacked over the years, LeBron James, Le, uh, LeBron James's son, 
Roland Martin, Jalen Rose, Tariq Nasheed, Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal, Martin Luther King, Ben Crump, Benjamin Crump, Dr. Clay, Mukasa Africa, Lord Jamar, and Lord Jamar's father-in-law. He does it in this video. He's, he's still going at Lord Jamar. Q Butter, Voice Watkins, Tyler Perry, Jay-Z, President Barack Obama, Obama, Don Lemon, Cornell West, Young Pharaoh. Obama. Were you still there? I ain't mad at you, but you're going to have to deal with the, the, the facts and the receipts. Just don't get up here repeating what Umar told you to say. See, that, 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 I'm not impressed by that. Byron Allen, Charles Barkley, Stephen A. Smith. I've had criticism of Stephen A. Smith. See? Kendrick Perkins, Shannon Sharp, Stedman. That was Oprah's uh, a boyfriend back in the day. Some of y'all may not remember that. DJ Envy. He done talk trash about DJ Envy, but then in a more recent video, and that's why you're saying this, because in that recent video where he's defending, we're going to cover it. He's Umar defends DJ Envy, and he said, oh, it's just a case of black men trying to tear another black man. I don't want to hear that. Come up off of that foolishness. Now, if you was a woman, I, a woman, I'd probably talk to you a little different, but I'm assuming that you're a man because of what you had on your thumbnail. You got to have more sense than that, bro. You just repeating what so many other people done repeated because that's what Umar told you to say. And that's what he say. So you repeat it, trying to tear another black man down. And yet Umar, that's all he does is talk trash about black people. When was the last time you heard him say positive, something positive about a black man? I'll wait. He gone after Terrell Owens. I see it in the Terrell Owens, one of my favorite uh, uh, football players from back. And I'm looking at the chat room. Anyone else? Chad, Chad Ochocinco, Kevin Samuels. Kevin Samuels is not my cup of tea, wasn't it? Rest in peace. He went after Shannon Sharp. He went after Stedman, DJ MVP, Diddy, Lee Daniels, Dr. Uh, Dyson, Jesse Jackson, Harry Belafonte, anybody else? Could crush chat. Help, help, help a brother out. See, I ain't mad at you. Stating facts, that's all. I know, I know Umar more than you know Umar. I know Umar more than his daddy know him. That's no exaggeration either. Did I miss anybody? He's going after Mike Tyson. That's right. Who was the, the other guy, the rapper that he went after because he, the rapper said he wanted to do a boxing match with him? I can't remember. And yes, he did go after Martin Luther King. He sure did. Any, any, is anyone else? He went after Hamburg. <laughs> And these are just the males that he going after. He went after Tasha K. He went after uh, 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 the Hamburglar. <laughs> Y'all crazy. <laughs> Ruben Rivera. <out. laughs> he went after Candace Owens. He went after, I already did Obama. Okay. That's right. Carlos Biorro. That's absolutely right. That's all he do is talk trash about black people. When's the last time? I can't remember who the, what the man's name that made that comment. I ain't mad at you. I'm just going to ask you straight out, and I, you ain't even got to respond in chat room, but I want you to really think about this, and I want you to, to do some research. You ain't going to do it because you just repeat what Umar say anyway. When's the last time you heard Umar say something positive about a black man? I'll wait. Did he really go out to Chadwick Boseman? Rest in peace. I hope he didn't. Okay, don't get mad out there. I don't want nobody getting mad because I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not up. He went after that the tennis player, the uh, the the young lady, she, uh, uh, black and uh, J Japanese, real real pretty young lady. I wish she was single because I try to hook her up with one of my sons. Uh, she went. He went after her on the Breakfast Club. I'm asking, when's the last time, Seti? Okay, Seti, you put Seti on there. Maybe we need to. Yeah, Freddie Gibbs was the rapper. Yeah, that's a Freddie Gibbs. He went out to Carol. I never heard him say go out to Carol. Carol was going crazy anyway. <laughs> Talking about we gonna have a hip hop, uh, a Holy Ghost family. We hip hop Bible. And, uh, I said if you don't stop, you need to go get a job. <laughs> Stacy Abrams and Cory Booker. Okay, a lot of these people I don't even know who you talk about. These <laughs> All right. Let, we gonna leave it. Yeah, Osaka. That Naomi Osaka. Yeah. 
You know, he's supposed to another example. He's supposed to be this mental health expert, whatever. And she has mental health issues. And she's talked about this. A lot of these athletes have these issues, just depression, and everything. And for him to go on a breakfast club, which is syndicated, people all around the world watching that. He's going to go in on her. You don't think that that didn't get back to her and had and has had some a negative or adverse effect on her mental health. Get up out of here. See, you're going to get me cursing. I've been trying not to. You're going to get me cursing up here, up here defending this clown. Then I ain't mad at you because I already done heard it so many times before I even have a list. And that one, your comment is sixth on the list. It really needs to be up there on the top three at this point because you always repeat that foolish. I don't want to hear it. And meanwhile, Umar Clowns, he, all he do is talk trash about black men. He mainly focuses on successful black men. When's the last time you heard him say something positive about a black person, a black man that ain't dead? I'll wait. So if you're going to pull that on me, you need to pull that on to your leader who's out here crushing cookies and collecting millions of dollars for a school that don't exist. That's all I'm saying. Fair is fair. OK, but we're going to leave that. Down. He even talk mess about soap. I mean, <laughs> the, black, the black soap, he just won't stop. <laughs> all, right. all right. I think I handled that. OK, you know, I get a little. Animated, but it's more of the show effect, you know, just to keep things interesting. But overall, I'm not mad, I'm not angry. You ain't saying nothing I ain't heard already. All right. <laughs> I'm surprised Umar didn't text me on that one. Uh, Robbie says, talks bad to them for not offering services, then immediately asks for a roofer. That's what Umar did. You're absolutely right. Makes makes them feel ashamed and ask for something right after. Yeah, but that's another ploy with these scammers. It's about degrading. Listen, whoever said that he's disrespecting the black audience with how he's talking while he's talking and then he's going to ask him for something just like in that video where he was talking about the trifling black people, the tri trifling a black people. Remember that video? That ain't no different. He shamed people. And then he, later on, he's going to ask for donations. It's like a cult. These cult leaders do that. My wife was watching this thing about the twin flames. Cause I used to be in that spirituality metaphysics stuff, too. But she was watching the twin flame. You should see how manipulative this guy was on there. It was so bad. Is that you, baby? Okay. I'm going to take this off so you can come on up. Okay, sweetie pig. Yeah, well, that, that's the thing, though, Robbie. That's what Umar does. He, 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 will make, he will shame people, and then he'll ask them for something. But part of the shame thing is to make them feel bad so they'd be more willing to give. But the truth is, he don't need – why is he asking for a roofer, roofer in Baltimore? You mean to tell me after four and a half, almost five years, he couldn't find a roofer? And, and in fact, he's had roofers up there. I can put the receiver. He already had roofers up there. One of them had on some 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 house shoes. The other one had on some and ones. <laughs> I said, really? That's what we that's what we doing. <laughs> but but I'm sorry. Uh, to get back to the point. Thank you so much, uh, Robbie. We're gonna get back to it uh, in Glassboro. Thank you so much. We'll get to in Firewater. Also, official Fred Hampton Gun Club. <laughs> says, why don't you ever show up to his lectures and ask him questions during his questions? Listen, I got a life. I there, There's no way. I wouldn't do that. I, I got a life. I got I got too much stuff to do. We got five kids. I got my job. You know, I do my live streams here when I can. And, but I, I ain't got no time to be going up to no foolishness like that. You know, I, I wish I wish his followers would ask these critical questions, like how much money have you raised? How about that? You can start there. You know, uh, where's the ledger? Where's the money been spent? How much money is left over? You know, this type of thing. But but they don't do that. They go along with the okie doke and they repeat exactly what he he tells them to repeat. It's like a cult. I was going to say, my wife, she's been watching this uh, series on, uh, I don't know if it's Netflix or it's it's on Hulu, but it's, it's this thing called Twin Flames. And uh, you should see uh, how uh, how manipulative this guy is. To, and he got these women and, and a couple of men, too, to do all kind of crazy stuff for him, you know. And, and I'm sure that when people were criticizing him online, that these same followers were trying to defend him. Why are you always trying to tear a white guru down? That type of thing. All right? It's just the same. It's the same stuff. But, but the critical question, what people realize at a certain point in that cult was that they have they were in a state of mind control. That's how they were simply repeating what Umar has already said. And Umar said that recently where, where people have brought up the whole situation with DJ Envy and Umar defends DJ Envy and says it's just a situation where a black man trying to, you know, black men trying to tear another black man down. That's what they did to me. So here we have this guy come on up here and he repeat the same thing verbatim. I'm not impressed. Uh, thank you so much, uh, official Fred Hampton Gun, Gun Club for Soup Chat. Also, thanks to Robbie Lott. All right, let's get to it. We need to finish this up now. My wife is home family and we working what's up sacred grove how you doing 
Uh, Big Sis can said lemon uh, lemon pepper steppers up to the edge. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can pull it up and show y'all. Yeah, he don't want people to ask questions. Let's see, he literally don't like anyone who debate. And yeah, I know. Even when that lady was saying, um, you know, uh, talking to him about him giving out his phone number, he didn't want to hear that. Uh, those buildings only have one leak, just one and only one. Yeah, I know. But see, he's already said that that the buildings are ready. He had two inspections. You know, there's plenty of work that needs to be done in there. But if there's a water leak up there. Why, why does it take him four and a half years, almost five years to get that done? Wouldn't, should, shouldn't that be the first thing you take care of to avoid water damage? Okay, I need to get up off here. Oh, here we go. Let's finish this up. There's only about three more minutes. This lady up here in the front row with the hat on, she still ain't looking at Umar because she, she's annoyed by it. I need a black roofer. Please take my number. Okay. Anybody know a black roofer? We need a roofer. Please tell them to text me. I need them to come up to the school so I can show them this leak. He gonna tell me what's gonna cost to fix it. Okay. I'm gonna pay him to fix it. Okay. If that shit leak again, <laughs> I'm gonna put a space all over social media. Cause we had about five black roofers and we got the same little leak. Big city to get your Can you believe this guy? Five, so black. Going back to what I said earlier to the uh, gentleman, and I'll say it, gentleman, I'm not impressed, though, but the gentleman who said, you know, tearing the black man down. Isn't that what Umar is doing here? Because he, this is make believe. I told people a long time ago that he's going to find any and every excuse to blame black people. Isn't that tearing black people down? Those 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 people who have come out to do work, uh, they're not uh, trying to harm Umar. They're trying to help Umar. And yet he flips it and turns it around and then use it as an excuse to bash them. In point of fact, not only does he bash them, he says, oh, you know, I'm going to put their face on. Yeah, people think that that's funny, but it's not funny because you're disparaging black business. Hello, I'm going to stop right there for a second. Don't tell me you're trying to tear another black man. Down. But with the same guy you defended is the guy that all he do is talk that trash about black people, black businesses, black men, black women, and black children. Amen. So come up off of it. Okay, this is a lesson for everybody. So five roofers, and no, and they're all black too, Black Mario. All of them is black. You know, they're all of them black, but not one of them were competent enough to get the job done. Well, Umar, and I should pull it up now, but we got to get up out of here. You shouldn't have Pookie and Ray Ray up there doing it. You should get some professionals to get up there and do it. And I can put the video. We had a guy up there, two guys up there that looked like they was from around the way that had on the and ones and, and it looked like he was going to go play some basketball. The other one had on some house slippers. Here we go. I need a black roofer. Please take my number. Okay. Anybody know a black roofer? We need a roofer. Please tell him to text me. I need him to come up to the school so I can show him this leak. He's going to tell me what's going to cost to fix it. I'm going to pay him to fix it. If that shit leak again, I'm going to put a space all over social media. Because we've had about five black roofers and we got the same little leak. You see me? So I need somebody who know what they're doing. And every roof will go up there and say, they didn't fix it right. They didn't fix it right. I'm going to do it right. They didn't fix it right. Here we are five years later. Mm -hmm. So I need a black roofer who knows. I told, you, I, listen, I told you all he's going to blame black people a long time ago. He disparages five different black roofers just right there. Don't hate the player, hate the game. Here we are five years later. So I need a black roofer who know what they do. We got this one little leak. Somebody. Yeah, how we doing on? Yeah, six is a charm. We, pay. we, pay. we, pay. we, pay. we, pay. we need one free. more. Okay, so if you don't. Yeah, how we doing online? Now listen, what's interesting though is he he already said that all everything is done. He already said renovations is done, but there's still a leak. What are you talking about? See, he, he's just he's a liar. That's that's what it come to, and that ain't tearing another black man down. It's just stating fact. I can pull the receipt right now. We said renovations is done. But if renovations are done, why do you have leaks? He says one, just one. It's probably a gang of more, especially on the other side of the street. I also need someone who knows how to do audio visual installation. We need a speaker system in the school so I can play music from the main. He said this in 2019, February of 2019. I can pull it up. Office, announcements, intercom. If you know anybody who do audio visual, as well as the uh, flat screen TVs, we got to put one in every classroom. If you know somebody knows how to do that, they can make some money. I'm giving you money making opportunity. Why can't you just 
make a phone call. They do it for you at Best Buy. What are you talking about? Well, I can't remember what they called them people, the Best Buy, something, what you call it. Because one time I bought a refrigerator and they came in, didn't even install it right. I called them back. I said, hey, uh, y'all going to need to replace this. <laughs> Oh, we're so sorry, sir. Yeah, they gave, gave me another one. It was I bought it brand new. The guy came in and messed it all up. He didn't know what he was doing. If you are a dietitian, if you know how to prepare food, please email me a 30-day meal schedule for the school. Yeah, the Geek Squad. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah, but uh, Umar said the same thing. He said the same thing back in February of 2019. Here we are almost five years later. He's saying the same thing. That's not tearing nobody down. That's just stating a fact. You might get the contract to be the dietitian for the school. I'm giving you money making opportunities. I told you about the bus van. Money making opportunities. But there's still no school. There's no school. What are you talking about? Also, once the school is ready, we're going to have the Black Women's Conference for the Sisters, Black Men's Conference. He said the same thing in February 2019. He still doesn't have any of this. Ex offender conference, Black Real Estate Conference, Black Farmers Conference. That's a new one. I haven't heard him say the Black Real Estate Conference. We also working on the Conscious Singles Convention. If you are single, he already said that they were going to have that three years ago. He said he was going to do it back in February 2019. I remember he said, "Yeah, we're going to have it this month, whatever it was." He still ain't had nothing. Ain't nothing. They ain't done nothing up there. You telling me it's taking uh, you five years to? That's according to Umar. That's what he's saying. And, and the truth is, he's saying that it's still not fixed. I could have fixed that. See, I'm I'm the kind of man where if if, if something don't get done and or something needs to get done, and I don't think that, and I'm not, I don't want to pay for it, I'll go and I'll research and I'll go figure out how to get it done. That's how I am. I'll go online. I'll even look through manuals. Every time I've done car repair, I say, okay, let me go look through this this own the repair manual. And I'll go and I'll go through the troubleshooting. I'll find out what the problem is, and I'll just do the repair myself to save some money. I don't do it as much these days. I'm too old. I'm getting older, but I've always been like that. But you mean to tell me, Umar, you can't get on the phone and get someone out there to to? What does that say about you? After five years, you're still talking that there's a leak and you have five different people up on the roof or five different companies, black people, by the way. What does that say about you, though? Stop dealing with Pookie and Ray Ray, then, if that's the problem. Or maybe maybe it's a whole big lie that you're telling. It's probably a lie. We always lie. All right, thank y'all. We got the 600 likes. Thank you so much. Okay, we're going to finish right here, right now. Thank y'all so much. Good correct chat. You are undefeated. Here we go. Go in conscious. Because you know it's hard to date in a world full of coons. Come on now. Okay, so right. you are single right. and conscious. Right. Right. Okay, is calling black people ra a racial epithets, is that tearing black people down? Yes or no? See, if a white person said, y'all, you, 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 Umar John's father, this is a white supremacist and y'all ready to jump out the window. But if Umar said it's okay, and if me calling it out, does that mean that I'm tearing him down? No. That's just stating a fact. See, Oftentimes, when you're you have this cult mentality, this cult mentality type of situation with these cult leaders such as Umar, you got you don't think clearly about things. You you give him a pass when he does the same things that you're accusing other people of doing. Hmm? FMG has more job openings than <laughs> yeah, they got more job openings, but they ain't got no jobs, Tommy, because there's no school. <laughs> Uh, good to inform the AK. Thank you for the chat. HNL says Umar Johnson, the autobiography of a man who fought black roofers with the help of Brother Jose. <laughs> Listen, this, this other thing, and I'll, I'll, I'm getting tired. That's why I'm, I need to get up over here. I, I got to get up. I got to be up four in the morning tomorrow. Listen, the thing is that even the whole HVAC situation with Brother Jose is another example. Just Umar, it's, he says that renovations are done, but they're they're not done. And it's always some excuse. It's always somebody else's fault. It's always somebody else is trying to sabotage. No, Umar is totally incompetent. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's in over his head, but he still keeps collecting money. Why? Because he needs the money to live off of. He has no intention of opening up a school. His intention is to get money and to crush cookies. I've been saying that from the beginning, and that has proven to be true. And that's not going to change. See, the facts aren't going to change. Well, I should say the truth is not going to, to change. That's not going to change. And no amount of defending Umar is going to change that truth, these truths. It's not going to happen. Okay? I'm a very uh, fair individual. When Umar does things, 
uh, the right way, I always give him credit for it. The problem is, and the challenge is that with Umar, he he normally doesn't do the right thing, and I hold him accountable for it. It's that simple. All right, thanks, good twin, uh, formerly AK as well as A Chanel. Everyone else who sent in super chats, and we're we should be able to finish here right now. Okay, there's only about a minute left. Here we go. You can come to the Conscious Singles Convention. We're going to match make conscious couples. Okay, now, brothers, I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm taking the best ones, but anyway. <laughs> See, he didn't say the best one. He said the best ones, didn't he? Hold on. Told y'all he ain't nothing but a. Hold on one second. We got another caller too. We'll get your caller closed out show. I'm taking the best ones, but anyway. <laughs> I get the first thing. I'm joking. Was <laughs> but anyway. Was <laughs> but anyway. Who <laughs> more funny? Brothers, I'm just gonna be honest with you. I'm taking the best ones, but anyway. It sounds like he said ones. He may have said one, but it's not like he said the best ones. <laughs> a lady up here laughing now <laughs> with the hat on. <laughs> okay, now. Brothers, I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm taking the best ones, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like he says one. <laughs> ones. <laughs> Plural. I get the first thing. Boy, I tell you, he always tells on himself in the end. I'm joking. No, you ain't joking. Be quiet. See? Seriously, though. We wouldn't have a conscious season. Now, ladies, don't get mad at me. You can't come to the conscious singles convention. Here you go. If you're not nappy by nature. <laughs> See, if you guys go and watch this thing, it's called uh, Twin Flames or something like that. That's one thing that the, 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 cult, a cult, the cult leader, he would try to manipulate the women to do whatever he says. Uh, it got so bad to where he put them on a diet and all of them was gaining all this weight, but he said it's necessary and they did it anyway. And a certain an idea of the twin flames is that the, you have a partner and that's supposed to be your, your soulmate for the rest of your life. And so a lot of these women, I'm just going to be real with it. They had low self-esteem. They weren't very attractive. Um, I'm just being honest. Okay. Based on uh, how I saw this, so he preyed on them because they already felt like they weren't going to be able to get a man. And so it got so crazy. There was all kind of crazy stuff. Had him working for him for free. Sound familiar? OK, but it got to the point where he started matching people up and, and you could he would he he has to sign up, sign off on whoever you match matching up with. But see, what happened was a lot of males that were involved, they stopped being a part of it because, you know, a lot of men, they just at a certain point, like, nah, this ain't, uh -uh, I ain't dealing with it. But the, the, their women, you know, they, they'll keep going along with it for whatever reason. OK, no disrespect. What he ended up doing was he flipped it around and said, well, since we can't find the men and there's not men that we. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to have you women uh, get with each other. So we had women who were heterosexual. Now they had to become. Uh, I guess you would say bisexual and then he would pair them up and then he would say you're masculine. And you're feminine and the ones that are feminine, they have to dress even more feminine. And the ones and these are all women and, and, and they're not lesbian. OK, but he this is the level of control. OK, these were heterosexual women. And, and he said, then, then these other women, you are the, the their male counterparts. So you have to be more masculine. You need to cut your hair. You got to dress like a man. You got to talk, you know, lower your voice like a man. Right. And there's women that went along with this. Remind me, Umar. <laughs> Keep it a buck. Okay? You got to be natural. If this is all you got to do, I'm going to tell you how to do this. Take the weave out the night before, put an African head wrap. Call Queen Mother of Four and get you a head wrap. That's all you got to do. Just wear a damn head wrap. That wasn't hard, was it? This is y'all's principle. As I close, let me give you my number, 215-989-9858, 215-989-9858, once more, 215. Uh, Perry, unlike he says, if I can research for two months how to self-install a $3,500 yard drainage system for $600, he can figure out how to Google a local repair. I, I know, absolutely. And, and I'm just... I, not so much these days, but 
there was a time where I was always looking for a way. No, I still do it, but not not to this degree, because there's certain things I won't do anymore. Like, like, you know, there was times where I would I would work on an engine. I'll get under the car, you know, I, that kind of stuff. I probably wouldn't do that unless it, it was like a two hour job, something I can do real quick. But back in the day, I would actually go and I would research and I would get repair manuals or whatever I had to do in order to save a couple of hundred bucks. And I would just do the work myself. All the things that Umar asked for, these are things that he could simply look up and see really what it is, Perry, is that Umar wants it for free. He wants other people to look it up and to find free labor. He wants free parts and labor. He wants people to find the people for free and then have those people work for free. That's really what he wants. See, because if he calls someone up, if he calls up a, a repair man directly who's a professional, they're going to quote him a price. He doesn't want to hear. He doesn't want to hear a price. He wants to hear people doing it for free. See, that's part of the issue here. But see, even still, if Umar doesn't want to pay someone, he should by this time. It's been five years. You don't think he couldn't figure out a way to go and repair that little the hole in the roof, whatever size it is, just to figure something out. There's times I've had to do that back when we live in Atlanta. Unless there's a massive hole, then OK, he, the way he's talking, it sounds like it's not massive. It's not a major, major issue. It may well be, but it doesn't sound like that's what he's talking about. Why can't you figure it out in five years? It's a good point right here. See, and, but th this is one thing I don't get about, but people who continue to defend Umar, the level of incompetence and unwillingness to learn. He's unwilling to learn. He's unwilling to do extra. He's unwilling to, to do research. He's unwilling to figure out how to get things done himself. We're a real man like Perry. And I'll just say it. I'm the same way. I'll, I'll go and figure out a way to make it happen. We'll go and do the research and we'll figure out what needs to be done. And even if we can't do it at that time, we'll go, OK, I need to save money so I can get that to get that part. So I can get that tool, whatever. And we'll save the money again. Inevitably, we'll get it done. We don't take us no five years. And see, here's the other thing, uh, 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 Perry and everybody else. How are you going to make these types of excuses when you've collected close to three million dollars over the last 13 years? There's no excuse that anyone can make. And that's not tearing down another black man. That's just calling it a straight shooter. That's the real talk right there. If you collected millions of dollars, there's no excuse that you can be that you could make that would make any sense to any rational thinking person as to why it is that there's still a, a hole in the roof. Come on now. But the amount of money he raised, he could have bought a roofing company. I'll leave it at that. Thanks, Perry, for the super chat. I feel like I'm being mean tonight. <laughs> Wallbanger has become a member. Thanks so much. I did upload another member video today. Y'all check it out when you get a moment. Okay, let's finish up here, right here, right now. Uh, we did have a call. Let's let's do this real quick. And KP, it says something about your uh, that it may have problems with echo when you when you call in. So let's see what happens. KP, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. How you doing? I'm doing good. How's it going? I'm, I'm doing great. I just, uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you for doing this channel. Um, since I've been subscribed to you, uh, I get a lot of pretty interesting information from you. Uh, some stuff that I agree with, some stuff I don't, but the majority I do agree with. Um, That's fair. And over, actually, the, the reason why I was calling was uh, just a topic that I think something us as uh, black people that probably needs to be talked about, and especially because of, you know, this channel. Um, with uh, the Umar videos, uh, the things I don't, one of the things I don't like about him, and I think we have a problem with in our community as black people is the rhetoric. Um, some of the language that's used, I mean, he's trying to pass himself off as uh, this conscious person. And um, he uses words like coon. Um, he mm -hmm. uses word a lot. And I think that's something that could be a topic on why do we use these words to uh, me myself, I probably never used uh, that word as even like a friendly word towards my friends in my life. Um, I, I grew up in a, a pretty good family. Um, my mom and my dad are both from Jamaica, so I wouldn't consider myself African American. So that's kind of not part of my culture. But I know African Americans do use that. But I do see uh, white kids using it, Hispanic kids using it now, and it's almost hmm. like. Um, a situation where I see it where it makes the community look bad in a way because the word is not even being um, represented from historically what it was used for. And I think yeah. it might be something that on your channel, um, if it's something you're interested in talking about, I think it would be a, a really good topic. I mean, what, what do you think about that? Or is um, 
because I know you don't use it yourself. I know you you put yourself on these. Um, you give yourself two a year. I thought that was it was pretty funny that you used to bring that up. <laughs> and, um, but I, yeah, I, I used to, but I, I ran through those so quick. I, I haven't done it in a long time. <laughs> so um, yeah, so KP, so I, I would say that black folk we will use the N word, and it, it's it's for a lot of us we grew up using it. Okay. Um, but but the 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 coon word that's not something that we normally use um it's maybe some people in the cookie crush chat I, can you remember a time where you called other black people that i, I don't remember a time even, yeah, even when i was a child I'm but uh, i'm calling other black people i'm just bringing that up in the aspect of he uses a lot of demeaning words towards black people that I think everybody can agree is uh, even the stuff with the women's hair. And that's a very sensitive mm -hmm. black woman. I mean, that's very disrespectful. We can all agree that those are demeaning things towards um, black people. But the use of the I N word agree. when black people use it in a certain way, it almost gives a license to other races to use the word and think that it's OK mm -hmm. to that word around and i think it's something that e even if you i understand there's people in their culture they're going to use words in a certain way but i i think as far as from a world view i think it's look uh, other people look at the black community in an ignorant way that we're ignorant by using that word in a certain way and i'm just i, I guess i i just think it's uh, it might be a good discussion to see where people are coming from and an explanation, people, different people's opinions on why the word is used, um, why people, different views on um, its importance or its lack of, or should it be important? Should it be something we should discuss? Is it a, is it a negative connotation or not within our community? Mm -hmm. I, I think it's something that probably hasn't been talked about and I think we should talk about it. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll think about it. And see, I think what part of this though too is that that this is an issue that's even outside of Umar, right? Um, Umar, I've heard him use the N word. I've heard him use uh, Kuhn. I've heard him use all kinds of stuff. And it, and these are just a few of the the racial epithets that that I've heard uh, different people uh, use online. The question I guess we can ask is whether or not um, it's acceptable. Uh, and I would say uh, that with the N-word, I think that, that there's a long history of, of it being used not just as a term of disrespect, but also a term of endearment. Now, should it be used you know, that way? That's that's uh, that's up for debate. Even as a term of endearment, there are some people that, that it, it, they were raised uh, hearing that, so they don't uh, take offense to it at all. I don't take offense uh, to it at all either uh, these days. If, if someone called me, that I, I wouldn't take offense, but there are people that, that would uh, feel that it is offensive. Kuhn, on the other hand, I, I just think that it's, it's um, there's no... Uh, historical context where that was ever used as a term of endearment by black people. And so for Umar to continue to use that and he uses it as a way to disparage black people, I, I, I think that it's, it's unbecoming. It's definitely something uh, that people should look at, but that's just part of it. I've heard him use all different things. There's other people out there. They use all kinds of terms uh, to disparage black people and black women uh, in particular. I, I just think when somebody is passing themselves off as to be this intellectual as he does, mm -hmm. uses the word, the yeah, way that's your point. Uses, the way that he uses it, because because everything is in context. So yeah. Um, so for example, if me and you were talking and I said, you know, my N and and vice versa, that's different than the context of somebody that's passing themselves off to be uh, the school principal, yeah. somebody that's yeah, building you. a school, doing uh, whatnot for the community, and the rhetoric that he uses, the language and the context that he uses it in, um, I think it can be very confusing to certain sets of people also because not everybody who wants to help the black community is necessarily somebody that's black or quote unquote African-American. So mm. I think it puts people in a certain position where I think when you want to represent your community, you want to represent your community the most positive manner. And I don't think he does that. And at the same mm -hmm. time, he's somebody that is, quote unquote, a representation of our community. Yeah. Or at least that's what. At least to some people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
he's, he's perce- uh, perceiving himself to be. So that's just something I wanted to bring up. Uh, th- thank you so much uh, for doing your show. Um, you, you've really uh, brought up a lot of, you know, interesting, you know, conversations. And obviously, like, what the best thing about this show is people just have a good time. It's fun. Um, <laughs> it, it, it's definitely interesting. So um, for you to do these marathon shows, I mean, I give you a lot of credit. I, I have a YouTube channel also. Um, man, to do to even do one hour with a guest is difficult. To sit there by yourself yeah. and do that, um, it, it's amazing. And also, I, I loved your uh, your flute stuff. I wish you would go do some more of that if you have time. But anyways, thank you so much. I appreciate it, and uh, have a good night. And you know, thanks so much. Oh, you're very welcome, KP. Thanks for calling in and calling any time, bro. I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, this would be a good topic, I think, for us to get to at, at some point. Um, it's it's not just with with uh, the N word, but even the 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 Umar Sain Kuhn. Uh, I remember he said that on the Roland Martin uh, show. Some of you guys may remember, remember that. That's from years ago. Uh, and uh, Roland Martin he quick he quickly shut that down. And and I actually think that that was the right thing to do. Uh, one thing I want to say too is that unfortunately, and this this gets back to what KP was saying. Unfortunately, there are people who actually see Umar as a representation of the black community. Okay. Recently, Umar had said some things about what was going on in the Middle East. And, and, you know, there are people from the Middle East who heard that and they had commentary uh, about that and criticisms of Umar. But I think they were in error in this sense. And they were in error because they must have thought that Umar represents the, the average black person here in the United States of America. Umar does not. See, that's that's the, one of the dangerous parts about what Umar, his rhetoric, is that there are people on the outside, they'll see Umar because he's getting views and people know about him and this time, and they say, oh, this person represents the black community or the African-American community. I'm here to tell y'all, he does not. He's really an outlier. He's like a shock jock on the outside periphery. He's not doing anything... Uh, uh, grassroots. He's not connected to any organization except the fictional fic- fic- or- organization that he has in his concoction in his head. That's it. Unfortunately, there are people around the world who still see him that way only because of the internet. That's it. If the internet did not exist, most people who see uh, have ever heard of Umar would not have even would not even know that Umar existed. And yet, his influence and in how he talks, how he talks about black people, how he use racial epithets, these types of things. There are people who look at that from the outside and they they say, wait a minute, something's wrong. They may say, well, this is their leader. Well, I'm here to tell y'all he's not. He doesn't represent black people. He doesn't represent the average black person's philosophy on life or attitude towards other black people in particular, because most of what he says about black people is negative. And we'll leave it at that. OK, let's finish up this video and we'll be done. Did I get any other super chats? Uh, I think I did. Let me see here real quick. Um, there's no way his followers are. No, no. Some of them are, Perry. Some of them are. You know, it's just it, it, there are people who get caught up in the rhetoric. And, and it, these are people who are successful in life, people who are not so successful. Even going back uh, years ago uh, when he set out venues, there were professionals, excuse me, professionals that would come out to see him. People who had PhDs, people who had master's degrees in the field of psychology and otherwise, they would come out to listen to Umar. That's when he used to dress in suits and carry himself, cut his hair nice. And he would, he would carry himself, you know, at least as a professional. Back then, he wasn't talking coon talk and throwing out the N-word or any of that stuff. See, but over the years, he's done it more and more. He doesn't dress the same. He doesn't hold, he's not, he doesn't have his composure, none of that stuff. And his, it, it, so there's people who still follow him, but there are people who are successful. They used to follow him. They don't follow him now. And, and there are some people who are still successful these days that still follow him. It's just it's unfortunate because he, he, what Umar has become, it, it, it's, it does not represent uh, uh black people it really doesn't he's he's really an outlier see what he represents is a black man who's got so caught up in his own shenanigans that he's literally destroyed his life and he's he's degraded his quality of life over the years to the point where he, you know you, we can't even say that umar is successful oh i hate to say that i really hate to say that but it's true we can't say that he's successful On any level, male female relationships, no, because you wouldn't be out here trying to crush these cookies. You can't say that he's financially successful because if he was financially successful, he wouldn't be having to ask for money for 13 years for a school that doesn't exist. 
we can't say that he's professional successfully because he ha as a professional because he's not a professional. He hasn't had a professional job. He hasn't had a job in over a decade. Umar's good at running his mouth, and that's it. Can't say that he's a builder. He's a nation builder, as he says. Still no school. Anyway, let's let's finish up. Thanks, Perry. Uh, and then uh, Gabriel, I think Gabriel sent uh, Gabriel sent in a uh, a uh, super sticker. It just doesn't show up here for some reason. Why would any parent trust Umar with their children? Name a licensed psychologist who speaks like Umar. And this is from Shanae. Yeah, I know. We 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 we've talked about this, but this gets back to what, what the caller was saying. He doesn't act like a professional. So why would anyone entrust their children uh, to his quote unquote school when he talks like this, when he behaves like this? And, and what we're seeing in this video, we're almost done. What we're seeing in this video, this doesn't even compare to a lot of the others. It's not even close to because we can pull up the, the setting rant. We can pull up when he went in on Zora. We can put, uh, put up pull up when he went in on uh, was acting crazy on Lord Jamar. He's basically calling me a pedo in that video. OK, saying that, you know, uh, saying that I was also gay. OK, I'm neither. OK, we can pull that up. We can pull up where he was uh, issuing physical threats to people because they were criticizing him online, not tearing him down, just being critical of him. Also, the Kobe Bryant rant, I was talking to Corey Bryant, the Kobe Bryant rant, the Tariq Nasheed voice walking when he went off on, on them. We can pull all that up and we can ask, OK, he's a licensed psychologist. Why does he speak like that? Why does he behave like that? See, well, the truth of the matter is that he's none of those things. He's just a fraudster. That's it. Nothing more. And he's online every single day trying to get money out of people, trying to get cookies from women. And that's it's it's really that simple. And then, of course, we can ask the question, should they what parent would would see all of that? Maybe they're not seeing enough of it. But what parent would see all that who loves their children would say, listen, you know, what? I'm going to enroll my child, my child in this guy's non uh, non-existent existent school. Well, I tell you, that, that's wild right there. Because see, if Umar was a white, uh, uh, quote unquote, professional licensed psychologist, Black people would be in an outrage, outward with what types of things that come out of his mouth. And if he was a school principal at this fanciful school that does not exist, you know, no doggone well that if your child's principal at the school that they go to right now was a white man, well, even a black man that was talking like Umar be talking, y'all be like, what? No. Okay, but Umar gets a pass. That's that cult stuff. He gets a pass. Okay, two more super chats. We're going to finish up. Lino, I'm trying to become a member. Help. Now, there should be a join button listed below these videos. It depends on what device you're on. Okay, I have a degree in cybersecurity. This happens sometimes. It's just how things are coded. In, in general, if you're on a PC, you should be able to see the join button. If you're on a laptop, you should be able to see it. Sometimes on a tablet, you won't see it. And sometimes on your phone, you won't see it. But there should be a join button where you can join to become a member. I uploaded a, a member video uh, today. Okay, and that also allow you to call in if anybody want to call in in the next show. Money says he was talking about whooping other people's kids. He sure was. He sure was. I can pull it up right now. In fact, Umar said that they were going to have what he calls a black a, a, a black room. I think that's what he called it in, in, in the school. And that's where he would discipline your child, your child, because it ain't going to be mine because I end up in jail. Someone put hands on my kids. I tell you right now, I ain't been never had no problem with the with the law. I ain't never broke the police. None of that ain't broke. No law. None of that. But someone put their hands on my kid. I already know how I am. Y'all won't see me on the news. But Umar up here talking about how he's going to pound their damn chest in. I can pull it up and play it for you right now. Now, is that bashing another black man? No, that's abusive. Umar's talking about abusing black children. So people get up here talking about why are you tearing down? Well, no, I don't want to hear all that. You need to deal with Umar first. Y'all need to. <laughs> all right. All right, money. All right, let's see. This is it right here. Thank you all so much. I know this went a lot longer than I thought. Well, three hours. This is lower than what we normally do is that over the last month. Here we go. 989-9858. You can text me. It's been the same number since 2005 when I took my first trip to Africa. One of the brothers go. in the airport, it was either Nigeria or South Africa. They stole my phone, you ran the it. bill up. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. I got canceled from, uh, I think that was Verizon. <laughs> Went to Sprint. Now Sprint is owned by T-Mobile. And I've had that number since August of 2005. And Frederick Douglass was there. Yeah, okay. And one day I'm going to have to give it up because when the school opens up, I can't afford for y'all to be calling me all damn day when I'm trying to educate black kids. But for now, <laughs> you have my direct number. Nobody che te checks it but me. I'd rather you text me because I do not answer the phone. Text me. All right. These poor kids sitting in the front row. My goodness gracious. Lord Jesus. 
Mm -mm. I don't mean to be eating, but I'm hungry. <laughs> all right, and on that note, family, uh, thank y'all so much for tuning on into this live stream. It was impromptu. I wasn't planning on doing it, but I only live streamed once already this week. I got the premium member video uploaded um, today as well. If you want to join, there's a join button below these videos. Um, we still need to start the series on Cesar Pena and um, DJ Envy. I'm going to try to do that, start that next week. Uh, I just got to figure out schedule wise. Now they're they're doing forced overtime, and I don't mind it, but I, I, I'm 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 not a spring chicken. All right, uh, I want to start that next week, and if we do that, we may do one Umar Johnson live stream, and then we'll do a, a second live stream during the week where we start that particular series. I also want to start a series on polite where we go back and look at some of the oldest stuff that I covered in the past, and then also want to do one on Jay Morrison. And Jay Morrison may be brief. I really want to get to that town hall because that was very very telling. Um, of the shenanigans and, and the manipulation. This guy, he's, he's doing something else. Um, the last point I want to make here, uh, this can't go on forever. Umar can't keep this scam going on indefinitely. Jay Morrison could not keep the Tulsa real estate scam going on indefinitely. He, he blew through $12 million. And I have a sense that he wished that he could start one up and he wants to, more investors, but the word is already out there. In fact, if you guys go over to his YouTube page and look at his engagement and look at the numbers, people aren't watching for him, they ain't checking for him, same thing on Instagram. If you have all of those subscribers, all those followers, and but you only getting a handful of views or not a handful, but y'all catch my drift, uh, that says something. And what, what has happened with Jay Morrison is what will inevitably happen with Umar. And that is that it will reach critical mass to where enough people know about these scams and they will they will say, listen, I'm not supporting this anymore. And there's plenty of people who've done that already. Plenty of people who've done that already. But Jay Morrison, uh, that day has already come, you know, and it's fascinating that he's still trying to, to uh, lure people in to get them involved. But people ain't hearing all that. He done wasted twelve million dollars out of the black community. Umar at this point is close to three million dollars. It's got to be close to three million dollars. But as tonight's show, uh, it, it has proven that he still has supporters who still believe that somehow uh, he's out here doing the right thing. I'm going to say this again, and, it's, and I'm upset. I was going to say this the last time, but I already know, because I already know you, my John, Paul, y'all say the same thing over and over again. I'm not impressed. You don't impress me at all. Don't take offense. Intellectually speaking, I'm not impressed. In fact, I, I think it's it's uh it speaks to the level of mind control that these scammers can have, these fraudsters can have on other people. I don't want to see that. I really don't want to see that. I want people to think for themselves, to be critical, to ask critical questions and critique. There's nothing wrong with that as long as you're not up there lying on someone simply to cause harm. I've, I've actually experienced that myself. But but if you want to get up here and, and say the same old thing, just know that I'll just go back and I'll just say the same thing. I already have a pre already have a preset. I've already know what, what I need to how to respond to these things. But at the very least, if you're coming over here, you need you, you should. I'm not going to say you need to, but you should at least hear what it is that I'm saying and, and what we're discussing here. And then after afterwards, think about it and then ask critical questions as to whether or not what has been stated is true based on what I show, the receipts that I show, and then you draw your own conclusion. Should I still be supporting Umar? Should I still be sending him? A lot of y'all ain't sending him money anyway. You ain't sending him no money. You are, you used to, but you don't do it. But it, should I still be sending him money? Should I be going on other people's platforms who are shedding light on Umar and 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 uh, seek to, to ask them questions like, uh, you know, why are you trying to tear? Should you be doing that? Probably not. See? But these are things that you're going to have to figure out and work through yourself. My job is not to go and back and forth with people or argue. I'm here to present the information with receipts and then you draw your own conclusion. And as a grown man, grown woman, then you use discernment and you move forward from there. Is that fair enough? I think so. And in the process, we have a good time because Cookie Crush Chat is undefeated. All right. Thank you all so much for tuning on. In. I want to thank everyone. Uh, everyone also to the mods. I got to give a shout out to the mods for handling the business. I gave some more wrenches out recently. As some of y'all may have noticed that. Thank you. This is my way of saying thank you so much for handling the business, for being here consistently. Thank you all so much. Also, want to thanks everyone who sent in uh, super chats during the live stream and super stickers. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the support. Thank you so much. I love y'all. I love all y'all. I also have a uh, PayPal Inc. and uh, Cash App. I don't even know what my Cash App is. Cash App links uh, listed down below in the description of this video. Uh, that's down there as well. Uh, the next live stream, I'm not quite sure. Y'all just uh, stay tuned. I'll be updating people soon to let people know when the next time we'll be live streaming and, and the scheduling for that. But for members, there is a new video up there for you all that I've, I've put up there uh, today. 
Thank you all again. Everyone saw the Cookie Crush Chat. Cookie Crush Chat is undefeated, and as we always do. All right, let's try to get the 650. 650 family. 55. 55. 650. <laughs> Rent gang family. Shout out to Dr. Uh, Jay Kelly. You are the champion. MG is coming. What's up, MG information man? The OG right there. coming. MG is coming. It's coming. It's <laughs> got a cookie. MG <laughs> is coming. Jimmy Jamboree. MG is coming. Yeah, MG is coming. It's coming. Thanks, Southern Cook. Real quick, I don't mean to pause this, but thank you so much. And thanks for calling in and sharing your story. You are appreciated. Okay, I just want to say that. Right on. Let's go. It's coming. 643. We need seven more families. Amari Gandhi. It's coming. Gucci Chagalia family. We're trying to get the 700 for the 650 family. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> it's coming. Oh, it's coming. The money, the homie. <laughs> the OG. The OG homie. It's coming. <laughs> the OG is coming. Thought this person now. The T be twerking. It's twerking. Bye-bye. <laughs> Good night, Tata. Bye. Thank you for tuning in. I'm glad y'all enjoyed the show. I wasn't planning on doing it, but it looked like it worked out pretty good tonight. All right. Moving to the event. All right. Thanks, Black Mario. Get that roof fixed, my brother. <laughs> that's, that's enough. Okay. Shout out to everyone in Cooker Chat. Cooker Chat is undefeated. Uh, y'all have a wonderful rest of the evening. I'll talk to you. Love y'all. All right. Y'all take care. Peace.